Hello, uh, why is our you, you, you did not log in? No, yeah, 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 you came now. Okay, okay. Hi, Mas Satoshi. Uh, you you unmute first, please. Uh, okay. How are you? Oh yeah, now you I can hear you. Okay, so tell me. Uh, okay. Uh, how are you? Yeah, fine. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Uh, uh, can, thank you very I much. Just, can, I check, can I check? Can I check sharing the? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, please try. Uh, so, what's uh, about uh, Professor Puruta? Oh, uh, he's here. Uh, you okay. Want to talk to him? okay. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. He might be busy. Uh, so how I can just share? Uh, can you just? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the bottom, you can see that uh, share screen of some. Uh, but some, green... you need you need to give some the hosting hosting oh yeah, yeah 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 yes 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 nagaraju can you hear me yes yes yes, yes, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm done already yes yes yeah ah okay thank you yes so now you are co host now now you can So, what is the temperature today in Japan? Ah, it's cold here. It's yeah, cold. it is around four degrees yeah. Celsius. I saw that temperature. Ah, uh, not so much, but some uh, today maybe ten degrees something for this. Oh, it is ten degree. All right. All right. Yeah, this is Kyushu University. Your department, huh? Okay. Can you see? Um, yes, 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 yes. I can see it very nicely. Okay, is it good? Good to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is spectacular, basically. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I will just close at this moment. Uh, yeah, you just uh, yeah minimize that, and that is okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will start some uh, four thirty here. Mm, oh, what say it again, please? Ah, uh, so can I start at four thirty here, right? Oh, well, uh, you can. Uh, yes, so yes, yes, yes. Another fifteen minutes. Is, Another fifteen uh, minutes. Yeah. One one p.m. One one p.m. Yeah. At your yeah. time. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Just stay there. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
So what is the COVID situation in Kyushu University at this moment? <laughs> That's timely. Uh, one student have, but it, <laughs> is okay, suffering. Okay. okay, just one student. So, so I mean, all the students are already inside the campus? Uh, yes. Oh Most... my God, oh my God. That means several thousands of students are there, right? Uh, yes, but some, uh, it is still uh, something for security uh, level. Okay, maybe, maybe 50% bachelor, students are allowed. Bachelor students cannot come to the campus okay. uh, all the time, I, can, okay. I think. A oh, few right. graduate students can just join. Okay, but, in the uh, yeah. but if just only one infection is there, that is uh, not a, a very, I mean, uh, I mean, that is not the worst situation, I can say that is okay. Yeah, but some, yeah. Is, uh, but huge. still, but still that one person can infect many people. <laughs> so yeah. you need to be very careful. In Fukuoka area, it, it's about hmm. 50, total 50 person. Okay, okay, total 50. But some Tokyo okay. is terrible, about uh, more than 500 uh, per day. But still it is okay. Tokyo is the world's most popular uh, city. Like like millions of people are there now. So you can expect more people. Yeah. How about your case? But he, <laughs> this is the terrible situation here. Several thousands, I mean, uh, every day several thousands new cases so, so <laughs> it is not comparable so please don't compare <laughs> we are not comparable but uh, we are comparable to us <laughs> but yeah. still students cannot uh, enter no campus. no no still now no, uh, not uh, i mean not only very, very few limited students like like phd students and uh, um, uh, few third year students maybe i mean you yeah. can I mean, it's countable uh, uh, quantity, so I got it. Mm, like that. Uh, so that's the reason. So that is the reason. Okay, so uh, Stephen uh, cannot attend this session because he has the class for, from uh, morning to the afternoon time. He's also very busy with uh, class. Yeah. And uh, and he told me that just say hi from his end. So I'm just telling you on we have okay, Stephen. <laughs> okay, hi Masatoshi, like that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, okay. So I hope to I can catch uh, some Stefan's uh, talk, but I also yes. don't know exactly. Just the to... same time, same time like you, like like uh, yeah. today. So he's also in the uh, third day, uh, third day, uh, one o'clock. So okay. I will be there also. I will be there. So <laughs> uh, can I co uh, can I connect? through this link yes yes I, I will send you the link i'll send you don't worry about that i'll send you the link and i'll send you the message as well oh some uh, each session have an individual link yes yes six, ah, sessions okay. has a, six uh, uh, links are there mm, okay so like that so i will send you that link don't worry mm, yeah so this is the only way to interact at this moment because of this pandemic things and okay uh, <laughs> yeah let me couple.
గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ రామారావు గారు రామారావు సార్ సార్ వెంకటనాథ్ సార్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సార్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ యా యా జస్ట్ గివ్ మీ వన్ మినిట్ సార్ ఎమర్డి సార్ ప్లీజ్ సార్ జస్ట్ టూ సెకండ్ సార్ వీఆర్ అబౌట్ టు స్టార్ట్ ఇట్స్ ఓకే ఓకే నో ఇష్యూ నో ఇష్యూ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ టు వరండ వీఆర్ అబౌట్ టు స్టార్ట్ సెషన్ టూ వీఆర్ అబౌట్ టు స్టార్ట్ సెషన్ టూ ఆఫ్ త్రీ డే ఇంటర్నేషనల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ ఆన్ అడ్వాన్సెస్ ఇన్ సైన్స్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ ఫర్ బెటర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హెల్త్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ అండ్ ఎనర్జీ సో టుడే మార్నింగ్ వీ హ్యాడ్ వన్ ఇన్వైటెడ్ టాక్ బై డాక్టర్ ఎస్ రామకృష్ణారావు సార్ so today afternoon we are having one more talk by dr ishida from kyushu university japan so today from 1 pm to 2 pm the invited talk will be there followed by one and a half hour oral presentation and half an hour poster presentation for today session the resource person is dr ishida from kyushu university japan and uh, the chair of the session will be professor ramarao malla a very well known cancer biologist from geetham institute of science visakhapatnam and the coordinator of the session is uh, dr ratnamala and uh, today we are having the oral presentations like this the uh, information was already shared to all the members and followed by three poster presentations okay so welcome master tosi to githam yeah. thank you and it is a great pleasure yeah. to meet you virtually yes and hope one day we will meet physically that is yeah, hopefully <laughs> okay yeah thank you very much yeah thank you now i would like to request uh, dr ratmala madam to take over the session and invite the both resource person as well as our chair of the session please ma'am okay sir so, uh, good afternoon one and all uh, 
to this uh, international e conference and uh, this is a session where the audience may be experiencing post lunch slam the moment right after the lunch which is one of the most challenging moments for learning but i am very sure that professor masatoshi ishida from uh, kyoshi university japan is so influential that we will all going to raise our spirits high and participate actively and submerged in the topic welcome sir thank you and uh, i also welcome uh, ramaragaru malla uh, to the chair the session sir ramarao sir Uh, sir uh, uh, ramaragaru uh, sir you are in Sorry. yeah yeah thank uh, you madam introducing yeah. introducing the speaker will be done yes, by yes 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 yeah right yeah uh, please invite her okay so i i request uh, dr mastoshi ishida from the uh, school of uh, graduate school of engineering uh, center for molecular system Kyushu University, uh, Fukuoka, Japan, and please uh, uh, start your uh, presentation. No, sir. Before that, But, uh, let us request yeah. Dr. C. H. Madangaru to introduce the speaker. Yeah, please, uh, madam. Please introduce Dr. C. H. Uh, C. H. Madam, please introduce the speaker to the audience. Yeah. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity, sir. It's my great pleasure. to introduce dr masatoshi shida dr masatoshi shida received his phd degree from kyushu university in 2010 under the supervision of professor yoshinori naruta after working as a research fellow at the institute for materials chemistry and engineering kyushu university he worked with professors jonathan l sessler and dongo kim as a w cu post doctoral research fellow at yonsei university seoul south korea He is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry and Center for Molecular Systems, Kyushu University, Japan. His current research in interests are focused on the synthetic and redox chemistry of novel pi-conjugated porphyrinoids and use them as for infrared biomedical application and imaging agents. His H index is 25 and I I10 index is 55 with total citations of 2000 66 from more than 90 international reputed journals which include 16 journal of american chemical society 14 angiotechemy one nature chemistry eight chemical communications one chemical review and one chemical society review all having impact factors more than 10 with this brief introduction i now invite dr masatoshi ishida to deliver a talk on n confused exafirins potential functional materials for second near infrared light applications professor masatoshi shida screen is yours sir thank okay. you okay <clears throat> can you see is my slide yes, yes sir yes yes yes, yes. everything okay. is perfect okay thank you for kind in, uh, <clears throat> invitation uh, by uh, professor uh, atano jana it's a great pleasure to be here uh, to talk about my recent topics Um, in this well uh, organized symposium so today i like to talk about uh, n confused hexafluorin it is actually a potential function material for second near infrared light application we are going to uh, somehow uh, organic chemistry as material chemistry so it is for biomedical application so this is a view from the view of our campus first of all i like to just introduce our campus for first So this <clears throat> my city Fukuoka is uh, this is one of the Japan's largest city in administrative economic and cent cultural center of the southern most island of Kyushu area sir ipudu tarvata nenu morning laga vilandani introduce chestanu so here is some picture for the important place of Fukuoka showing uh, that I find is recommended to go some researcher it is known as the paper will be accepted when you go And then this is a view from this uh, new campus. Actually, we recently uh, relocated from this uh, downtown area to this uh, somewhat down, uh, in the forest. <clears throat> so Kyushu University is a Japan national university located in Fukuoka, as I 
uh, which is the fourth imperial university in Japan. So <clears throat> our campus is building engineering here. So information science, science, agriculture, those are some well connected. So in the our minimum campus uh, can just, you can see. So this is the ground view for our uh, building. So here uh, we are working on there. <clears throat> So before I start uh, talk, starting my talk, I will briefly introduce myself as already uh, chair uh, introduced my, uh, my uh, personal background. So I was graduated uh, Kyushu University 2010 and the supervision professor Yoshi Naruto. Actually I was working on some bio and chemistry. After that, I just moved to some South Korea to just work with uh, John San Sassler and the professor Don Po Kim. Uh, they are working on some expanded power filling, synthetic power filling, and some uh, photophysical uh, property of those molecules. And partially, I was uh, working with uh, Professor Shimichi Fukuzumi. At a, at a, he already retired, but some, at the time, he was in the Osaka University. So I was there in Seoul, and uh, during the time, I visited some Osaka as well to work with there. So about research for during some period, I was working on some aromatic, aromatic switchable uh, molecule as shown here. Based on the Hickey topology, uh, we know well as a 4N plus 2 pi more conjugated macrocycle is uh, known as the aromatic molecule. So there are some 4N pi uh, conjugated macrocycle as anti-aromatic compound. So I was also focused on the intermediate species for 4N plus 1 pi electron. This is no aromatic, which is radical. So which uh, 4N2 plus pi, 4N pi, and 4N1 plus pi uh, interconverted molecule have been achieved. It's shown here. It is so-called Rosalind expand molecule. It's a or, 24 pi conjugate macrocycle can transform to uh, 25 pi radical and 26 pi cation species by just addition of the acid. And it will be converted again to this reduction to the uh, oxidation to give 24 pi system. Another example for XTT polyphen molecule is just for highly electron rich polyphen derivative, which can be easily to oxidize it to be. Uh, dicatamine species to be known uh, from no aromatic kinoidal compound to be dicatamic uh, aromatic compound. But interesting one is just addition of the chloride anion. It, uh, this, it's triggered to the bound to the zinc center. It's the anion binding trigger to this electron transfer when it is in the presence of this electron deficient uh, lithium encapsulated fluorine, and it is converted to charge separated species. It's, so we can just consider this species can be for 19 pi electron, it is uh, 19 pi electron radical species. So we can just convert it each other by using this uh, strategy. Those redox chemistry, uh, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, after this chemistry, uh, I was working with uh, Professor Hiroki Furuta. He is working uh, mostly on n confused porphyrin derivative. <clears throat> so I studied for this uh, independent career with Professor Furuta at Kyushu University. So, so here I have show you the key material is again porphyrin. This is well-known pi conjugate compound. It is well seen in the nature or some industry. Uh, because of some unique optical property, uh, those porphyrin can be utilized in various applications such as oil D material, solar cell or photocatalysis and photodynamic therapy. So those porphyrin-based material have attracted attention for various applications uh, and to utilize for unique uh, photofunctional property. 
So it's always utilized for multi for this conjugated die for this. So as mentioned about paraffin as a unique compound, but today's main key player of our chemistry is a more larger pi conjugated macrocycle. This is so-called expanded porphyrin. This is four tetrapyrrole porphyrin, uh, five member uh, the pentafyrin, uh, six hexafyrin, seven heptafyrin, uh, eight octafyrin, more higher one. <clears throat> the remarkable feature for expanded porphyrin is highly flexible scaffold. So porphyrin is actually rigid planar molecule due to some internal hydrogen bonding, but once increase the number of uh, pyrrole, it is going to very flexible to just twisting uh, or some bending or something more with twisted form like this. Then another one is a large absorption coefficient and emission property in the near region due to some large pi conjugate circuit. So we can just see all feeling have uh, well absorbed in visible light, but larger pi conjugate macrocycle can absorb near region, near right. And often uh, can uh, take uh, one metal ion into the center core, but expand porphyrin can accommodate more than uh, two metal ion here or three uh, using for this kind of some, uh, which can be utilized for Regan. Actually, this uh, expanded porphyrin chemistry had initiated by famous organic chemist Robert Woodward. He first succe uh, successfully synthesized a safety molecule. It's a five pyrrole member ring. It's one metal carbon is just missing for this derivative in 1966. Then after that, some growth is reported for the first metal complex of the expanded porphyrin. And our, my previous boss, successor, is the reported taxophilin molecule, textile molecule. It is kind of some uh, unique viral applicable molecule for cancer therapy. So in terms of some main synthetic achievement is by done by Professor Atsuhiro Oscar and uh, Hiroiki Furuta by in 2001. It is one part synthesis for metal I substitute derivative. So I see, I can show you for the typical condition for this orphan pyrrole are aldehyde using acid condensate reaction and after DDQ oxidation, which gives porphyrin, but when you utilize uh, very electron deficient allyl group and hot at the high concentration condition keep uh, various type of conjug uh, large conjugated expanded porphyrin at the one pot reaction as shown here. Due to this contribution, many porphyrin expanded porphyrin derivative have been uh, synthesized, such as what Bajinsky achieved, such as X. Uh, Caliber expanded porphyrin, it is substituted uh, with benzene ring with pyrrole. So, which is actually a unique molecule, it is twisted to be half of this alibidine here, with to consider to be Möbius twisted uh, topology here. So, different with the Hucke topology, Möbius aromatasty can take it to this. Uh, four and two plus by lactone conjugation macrocycle is just for reversal to be anti aromatic, and four and five species is the aromatic species here. And a unique octafilin molecule can show reactivity just for methylation for the copper, it's just giving two copper porphyrin just for metathesis like the action have been done. Or some later. It's a stable uh, open shell dialogical molecule can be stable for expand porphyrin scaffold or some such kind of some uh, fully 
uh, 3D conjugated aromatic cage are being synthesized in 2019 uh, 18. On this basis, what we are doing is uh, just end compute the modification of this hex at large expand polyphenol chemistry. So, uh, Professor Fulta and Professor Grajinsky ind independently reported the, a new isomer of this uh, polyphenol analog, which is alpha alpha linked porphyrin uh, can be converted to alpha beta linked. Uh, for thing. So, in the, as a result, it's a uh, nitrogen is going to outward in this molecule. So, this is uh, N confused porphyrin derivative in 2000, uh, 1994. So, based on this idea, we just utilize for the N confused modified speed papyrus is here to just give it to this kind of derivative. Uh, and confuse uh, dioxahexaphene. This is a unique molecule to versatile much metal, co uh, metal co coordination platform. It is uh, currently we are just expecting for this nice uh, biomedical dye application. So today I'd like to talk about some general introduction for the dye, particularly for second near infrared imaging. And then I uh, just prepared for four topics about this related chemistry. First of all, I briefly introduced molecular bioimaging. So far, many bioimaging uh, modalities have been developed to visualize and characterize and determine the important biological processes at the, at the living system. Uh, Positron uh, emission topo uh, tomography. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasound, and fluorescence imaging technologies have attracted their attention to study in vivo molecular biology. The related research should contribute to the understanding of the disease and drug de uh, development for the future clinical trial. Among of them, uh, emission-based imaging probes have been extensively studied because of the simplicity. Many synthetic chemists can participate in these chemist topics. So many chemists uh, by uh, fluorescence by imaging application have been focused on visible and the near infrared region. So far, this is a conventional uh, right uh, window area. But now currently, uh, the chemist is going to expand the shift to the more lower energy region is so-called second near infrared NI2 region, which is uh, defined by uh, less than uh, more than 1,000 nanometer wavelength region. Yeah, as shown here. To utilize it for this uh, window is have uh, several advantage, such as light scattering is very low in compared to some visible to near region here. And the second one is internal autofluorescence emission uh, uh, effect is quite low in this area. And the third one is uh, input energy can be enhanced uh, in the near, near two region compared to the visible or near one region. So we can utilize for large, a large uh, hyper energy in, light input can be used. On this basis, we can just uh, utilize for this imaging is sh as shown here, this using for near window and near two window, you can see it's more clear uh, resolution for the imaging the picture using for near to uh, window for here. So that's contributed to be more deep tissue imaging for uh, currently uh, chemistry. Even very recently, the first in human near to fluorescence imaging guided liver tumor surgery has been achieved as shown here. So using for visible one and near one lesion and the near two cameras, so as shown here, the human uh, surgery can just uh, detect it more uh, sensitively for this uh, tumor uh, cell in this uh, surgery system. To achieve such imaging, so many uh, uh, near two emission material have been reported, mostly based on inorganic quantum dots 
or carbon-based material for rare earth nanometer particle. And compared to this, organic dye is also attractive due to some the biocompatibility and the tunability for the wavelengths. Here, we, you can see a uh, typical uh, cyanin-based dye can be utilized for kind of uh, large pi conjugated longer uh, polymetric structure can achieve for near two region. Um, donor accept a donor like a CT type molecule as shown here that is also contributing for the near to emission property. So compared to this, we are just looking at this different uh, molecular scaffold because of this those uh, molecule is highly uh, unstable and uh, photo irradiation because those molecules have intrinsically homonomous gap is very narrow. It is easily oxidized under atmospheric condition, but we are looking for high stable uh, near two dye so we just focus on hexafilin based molecule can just utilize for various uh, tunable uh, dye scaffold for bioremission application. Another reason for this utilize for hexafilin is unique photo uh, excited dynamics. So upon photo excitation to be a, a single state, so hexafilin it goes back to some ground state by emitting some molecule, emitting some the right. This is a uh, quantum is almost 0.5%. It is quite low. Uh, mostly it is decay, non of decay processes. But it is uh, really uh, go to some uh, triplet state, but triplet energy is uh, quite low than uh, single oxygen uh, energy level. That's why the molecule does not give any reactive oxygen species that's why this uh, dye is highly photostable compared to some uh, cyanin-based dye or uh, naphthalocyanin. So hexafilin can utilize for the photostable and non radiative decay contribute to the heat generation. So two uh, key feature can con uh, expect it to utilize for photoacoustic imaging. This is a hybrid imaging modality, uh, input photo excitation and ultrasonic wave detection method. So far, this emission property, for instance, imaging can only applicable for uh, millimeters uh, surface of this tissue. However, uh, photoacoustic can just penetrate more deeper inside and then get some of this uh, photosomal uh, signal, uh, photocall signal using uh, for the detector. As shown here, this is near region and near two region, we can see uh, better resolution in this window. So we can just expecting for the improvement to improve uh, imaging resolution using hexapin based photo PA contrast agent. Then <clears throat> in terms of organic chemistry, uh, we just utilize for this uh, n confused modification of this uh, large expand porphyrin. So porphyrin is uh, uh, distinct for orb uh, pi orbital, but when you just couple with the metal co coordination, it doesn't change anything about uh, so the optical property. It's not so much, but hexaprene system have a narrower homonomous gap. It is uh, highly uh, interacting between some metal d pi orbital, so d pi interaction contributes largely changing for the uh, frontier orbital. So we can just tune some of this optical energy uh, to this near region to this more deeper near region. To achieve this, hexafilin is not suitable ligand because of the nitrogen is going to, to directing outside, but when you just relocated some nitrogen atom using for n confusion synthetic modification to just give a nitrogen goes back to inside to give, give some MNO type coordination sphere can easily incorporate by two metal ion 
So we can just fine tuning some MO orbiter using for metal couple strategy. So using for this, we can just shift its uh, energy to be lower energy region. This is intensity is in, maybe increase and the so visible region is broadening. So we can just design for near to die based on the metal uh, experience system. So first I want to just show this some this uh, WN confused dioxafixaprin. This is the first near to PA contrast, small contrast agent. The synthesis of this WN confused dioxafixaprin is shown in here. This is unique uh, confused pile embedded uh, tripinum molecule can just uh, acid condense uh, to be pentaforphenyl aldehyde. Then we can give some two sets of some products. This is a T2 molecule and the T3 molecule. But initially, we just thought this is a trans uh, 26 pi vector. This is aromatic form. This is a 28 pi form, it's anti aromatic. But recently, we just realized this is not true. This is uh, their structure is just for cis cisoid type cis species. So, as you can consider for the direction of the nitrogen, of the confusing its uh, opposite side and the same side, it to give some after oxidation to give some dioxo species like here, and here. So we can just get some 26 by di trans type system, and this is cis type system here. So, first, I just want to just uh, show the characterization for this distinct 26 by aromatic macrocycle T2 molecule. This is uh, according to the Hickel topology, 26 to pi arcton, 2 plus 2 pi arcton is the aromatic system. So it goes to uh, distinct absorption spectra, like some just similar uh, famous porphyrin. So they have some solid bond and the Q bond. Uh, this is porphyrin like feature. And then any mass spectra shows uh, beta proton, and peripheral beta proton is highly low field region. And the negative uh, inner NH proton is highly uh, high field shifted. It is typical diatopic green current. Then crystal structure shows, uh, as shown here, this is uh, highly prana macrocycle. This is just for laterally uh, pi extended with porphyrin derivative. Uh, con contrast to some trans derivative cis. Uh, type C3 derivative is not, not so much uh, similar because uh, absorption spectra is just for nothing and feature spectrum. This is visible one with a tearing spectral feature. The animal spectra shows uh, <clears throat> beta proton is not shifted and the NH is high uh, low feed region appears for this. So this is a typical feature for no aromatic compound but we can just estimate the cis uh, is derivative by using fluorine enamel. So parafluorine atom for the pentafluorophenyl uh, substituent can just give three to two to one ratio. This is actually two plus one, two plus one uh, type of some uh, fashion. That's why two to one, one. Uh, uh, symmetry, so we can just expect that kind of some uh, structure for this. Okay, uh, excuse me. So the next one is we just tested uh, for <coughs> uh, this metal coordination we are using some distinct ligand, two ligands, so T1, uh, T2, and C3 molecule. So C3 uh, macrocycle can just accommodate some two metal ion easily uh, to uh, N, N, N region and N, N, O, O region to give some uh, distinct copper and zinc complex easily. And also, of course, we can just get some copper zinc complexes for using for trans derivative. But structure is totally different based on the crystal structure. You can see copper ion is present is here, but uh, in the side view, you can see very 
uh, twisted, subtle twisted core uh, hub uh, it is shown. And compared to this, uh, trans one is highly planar structure. It is actually a highly uh, influence to the some photoacoustic uh, signal intensity. So here it is a, a imaging setup. So PA in, uh, intensity is actually governed by a molecular absorption coefficient and then green anything parameter. This is some electrolytic param efficiency parameter for this. And of course, the right intensity, if the larger, it is high. And then quantum is for non radiative to decay. It is also the government for this. So non emissive uh, high molecular absorb, uh, absorption coefficient molecule can enhance a very large photoacoustic signal here. As a result, photoacoustic spectroscopy shows uh, this trans, uh, trans and cis. Um, these two molecules show the distinct optical property. This derivative is just for uh, plain uh, absorption feature in the near region, uh, but uh, trans one is distinct to cube one here, where it is old. And then here, this is we can see more than a uh, thousand nanometer, we can see near to absorption, which contributed to the uh, photoacoustic signal when you plotted some signal intensity. So compared to the zinc and copper, so zinc have relatively large molecular coefficient compared to the copper, but still a, a PA intensity is quite similar to this between copper to zinc. That means uh, zinc is actually emissive, but copper is non-emissive. That will be uh, giving some uh, some contribution to enhance the PA intensity. So the metal ion can uh, con uh, control some excited state property in, uh, including some PA intensity. So here the capillary imaging, we can just utilize for copper, trans, uh, zinc, trans derivative, we can just use some emission imaging for here. Excuse me, something for the problem for my slide. You have to share the screen once again, I guess. Ah, just a moment, I just want to start again. Not at game actually. Okay. Screen, screen again, you please share the screen.
Okay, can, can you yeah. see? Yeah, yeah, now it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, next uh, uh, topics about uh, it's more we are just, just looking for more larger shifted some near uh three region uh, absorption uh for this molecule <clears throat> so we are just doing for this uh hexaphane based molecule expand the porphyrin is a uh, useful platform to as absorbing the near uh, two region but when you just uh fuse or expand or some UTIs for some more radical like uh, molecule, we can just get the eyes for kind of some this near three region. It is uh, defined by more than uh, 1500,000 nanometer. But, but in contrast, we are just uh, using for this simple uh, strategy for couple methylation can give such molecule I like to show here. Again, you have came out of no sharing the screen. Again, you have to share the screen. Sorry. Yeah, now it has. Uh... Something wrong. Yeah. For this. No, yeah, now it has come. My exit is okay. Okay, so yeah, yes. So hopefully it is okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's so, fine. <clears throat> so the hexafilling is uh, we are just using for different derivative. It's this is non compu uh, non oxotype uh, hexafilling. So main just design concept is just for con uh, regular type and confusion modification changing this huge molecule of the diagram so <clears throat> compared to the uh, hexaphane paradigm complexes our hex confused derivative have this uh, larger uh, homo is inverted to uh, from this homo minus one to homo and to give some this uh, symmetry can interact with largely of this metal centered the orbital. So this anti-bonding interaction uh, can give large disturbance the homo energy, but uh, lumo energy goes back to stabilize by using uh, bonding interaction between some paradigm uh, D pi uh, center electron. So we can just utilize for by just changing the nitrogen position, we can just get a uh, huge hormonal gap is now one here. <clears throat> the synthesis strategy is the same as this. We can just utilize benzaldehyde. This tripians a standard macro, uh, uh, precursor can just give macro cycle here. But uh, instead of DDQ, we just utilize parchloronate. This is relatively mild oxidant to give some of this you no know, oxo species at that time uh, we just use uh, immediately paradigm or platinum methylation to give some individual this paradigm paradigm complexes paradigm complex shows some typical uh, distorted structure compared to the regular paradigm hexafilin and the platinum system also the similarly it is highly bent structure but unique one is optical property for this molecule. 
As I mentioned, for this molecule, it's a relatively large homoluma gap. Its absorption end is about uh, 1,400 nanometer in dichromatic excretion. But our molecule is showed highly shifted to uh, near region. It's about 1,400,000 nanometer. It is more than 450 nanometer shifted compared to this. This molecule is showed actually emissive. Uh, we can just see emission spectra here and then imaging uh, data for this work in solution is using for ingas camera to give some emission. This is because of this uh, transient absorption spectra for this molecule is showing some relatively large excited state dynamics for this. So this contributed uh, to uh, longer, longer lifetime for to give some fluorescence uh, spectra for this molecule. And also this uh, molecule can change to palladium to platinum complexes. So we can just expect this shift is more large shifted to cubans in up to uh, 1700 nanometer. <clears throat> this is, uh, this species uniquely uh, photostable under uh, photo irradiation compared to some of this cyan based dye. And this uh, unique optical property, its absorption can just contribute to the photo acoustic spectra in near three region here. This is actually first example for this near CPA contrast small molecule is here. The next one topic is just uh, using for metal uh, DPI interaction, we can just tune the optical uh, nature in the visible region. So famous black dye in uh, 749 is known as a uh, absorbing panchromatic dye. So black dye should be useful for correction photo, uh, some of uh, solar photo energy, which is essential source for sustainable development in society. Uh, this is applica actually applicable for photovoltaic dye, what's is the blocking uh, material, but highly challenging is actually to capture near infrared region uh, we how to correct the right of photon using for this uh, single molecule for this model. So in this study, we figure out some combination with uh, different metal ion. It is a hetero, uh, metal gold and the palladium ion can give right to the desired broadened absorption profile of this hexaphene analog. So Using for this molecular orbital, uh, we can just get lower homo uh, orbital can contribute it to some MLCT uh, bond to the LUMO, so which correlate to some highly broadening panchromatic feature for this uh, molecule. So just taking some of this end confusion modification of this hexaphene, we just design for single end confused uh, hexaphene which can utilize for trianionic and dianionic heterometal coordination here. So this is gold palladium ion to give distinct structure. The synthesis is easy for the gold metallation here, palladium ion to here to give nice seeds for this molecule. We can characterize some uh, exactly graphic analysis can get a uh, gold palladium is just coordinated to NNNC mode and NNOC mode here respectively. The most interestingly, absorption spectra for the gold palladium complexes exhibit this extremely broad and spectral feature in the visible region, along with the near absorption here. As you can see, the color of the solution, a dense black color can be recognized by naked eye. And we can just uh, quantitatively uh, evaluate some of this color feature using it for CIE well, color space plot is shown here. So everyone, L value is actually rightness factor, but you can just see A, B, 
axis can just uh, changing for the uh, green to uh, green to red and this blue to yellow op uh, optical component. So in the center of zero area is actually so black condensed area. So this is a point for this molecule just giving for this close to zero. Although there are a slight shift of the band over absorption feature of this compound is not change upon changing solvent as shown here. Any absorbent, ID so, uh, respirer or some high polar ethanol also give uh, content, uh, contesting the back end solution and the highly soluble any uh, toluene and chloroform and ethanol acetonite also is here. So in order to understand the transition, uh, transition behavior, we performed the TDDFT calculation using a PCI method. So as you can see, a typical uh, glutamine for orbital model uh, for more minus uh, uh, for orbital can contribute to homo uh, to homo minus one and lumo lumo area here. But additionally, as I told this. Uh, home minus two, this is the metal center, the paradigm uh, contributed to orbital can uh, participate some transition from to LUMO is largely here. So this visible one uh, transition can uh, describe for this visible one region here. And uh, the using for this molecule is actually uh, good to photothermal conversion efficiency for a AUPD2 and is showing some higher uh, temperature rise upon addition, uh, upon ir light irradiation. It's up to 55 degrees for this. Compared to the sparfine, hexafilin in the signing green, uh, we can use it for the large uh, temperature rise and this is also photostable compared to the cyanine-based dye. Uh, this uh, hexaprene-based molecule is highly applicable for kind of some photothermal conversion. Also, this, uh, this it is uh, right addition to using for uh, near to a razor at 1064 nanometer, which also gives high increase of temperature is as shown here in the visible uh, uh, thermal image for this when you added the, the position here. So this is utilized, uh, utilized for photothermal therapy for using for near to razor application. So in terms of some water solubility, this is more, this molecule is not water soluble, but when you use super molecule approach using for this answer is invented some cap, um, molecule. It is developed by uh, Professor Yoshizawa and just using for this uh, complexation with supramolecular fashion, we can just get a uh, missile type uh, nanoparticle here. So this analysis gives uh, the diameter of 2.7 nanometer. So based on this, we can expect this sub six or seven uh, answer the same molecule can be covered by this molecule to give some nanoparticle here. This uh, nanopart missile solution can enhance the photoacoustic spectra is also in the near visible to near region. So we can just get a uh, potential contrast agent showing some false visible and near for PA response contrast agent. 
Uh, finally, I will give some different uh, derivative for PA imaging contrast agent, a small size for this. So large puffing array can attract the attention for near optical materials such as electroluminescence devices, uh, photosensor for PDT. So various puffing oligomer reported so far, but a few example molecules exhibiting near to absorption capability are known. The key feature is a weakening aromaticity of individual local uh, puffing side here. Using it for uh, kinoidal electronic structure, cationic form right here. So we can just get some this, uh, this uh, lowering some uh, local aromaticity, it's facilitated stronger electronic communication between the puffing system, which gives to narrower homonomal gap. On this basis, in confused porphyrin is a suitable scaffold for the, for the perturbated some electronic species. So NCP can uh, adopt the two in non-equivalent tautomeric structure is uh, 3H form is amine type nitrogen is outside and this amine type nitrogen here. So this is 3H, uh, 2H, CH here, 1NH, uh, CH here. We can just interconvertible. <clears throat> so by using some mixed calculation of this molecule, we can just get uh, compared to the porphyrin, it is going to narrower, a uh, smaller value, it is actually less aromatic compound. So uh, when you just ex, uh, nickel compensation, we just realize this molecule can give a uh, unique dimeric structure by using some nickel coordination to here. Uh, finally, the crystal structure, so this, uh, this uh, identified structure here. So that's uh, extended some, this dimo, its molecule is actually NICS values or local NIC, uh, NCP ring is quite low compared to the NCP monomer. So we can just expect it, conjugation is not some uh, local, rather than we just expect it globally conjugated here to ease of, of both molecule. That's why we expected some, this NCP absorption is just Monomines here, but the dimer is uh, highly shifted to near two region. This is actually contributed some uh, efficient uh, PA uh, response imaging here. So we can just get more than thousand nanometer. We can uh, better uh, signal intensity compared to that uh, above introduced hexaprene system. Oh, this is so sorry for this. I just consumed of time for this. Uh, I just uh, finally, I'd like to uh, show the fin final slide for this. Uh, I'd like to uh, show, so the end confused porphyrin scaffold is, is utilized for various type of uh, new ligand platform. So we can just make it more larger one here. We just show some of the example here, or more smaller contract derivative can uh, contribute to catalysis or chiral, mat chiral material. So I will hopefully I can share the different topics with you in the future. Now, finally, I just uh, uh, conclude this for the same confused modification. It would be a new methodology to contrast the specific metal coordination uh, based dye. We can just hopefully it is for kind of some biomedical application. And finally, I, I acknowledge to some lab member, Professor Furuta, Professor Shimizu uh, for kind of, uh, advice for me and the uh, strong collaborator can help for me. And thank you for the kind of uh, listening. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mashitoshi. And very nice and elaborative talk on the material chemistry. Yeah, sorry for the, this. My, my PC is something wrong here today. Yeah, uh, but it is uh, metal porphyrin derivatives. They're uh, uh, very a fascinating area of our research, especially in applications. You have given the an elaborative and informative talk. I hope the many of the audience may use uh, this kind of the chemistry for preparing many more uh, uh, porphyrin derivatives, metal derivatives for the applications in the biomedical uh, field, especially theranostic, both therapy as well as the diagnostic purpose. 
and yes. also the other fields like uh, the capturing the solar energy and uh, photo acoustic uh, uh, imaging the today you know the one drawback with the cancer biology is, is the lack of a proper uh, 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 i mean the imaging uh, the technology for early diagnosis of the cancers i hope uh, your contribution may be very much useful uh, in for uh, early diagnosis of the cancers and uh, other uh, the diseases where the uh, imaging technology is having applications yeah hope now please. thank you yeah <laughs> Uh, now uh, i hope it's a question and answer session yeah. i request the uh, participant uh, madam yeah uh, you can ask the questions by chat or you can ask directly can what the mode we will any, request any, madam anyway is okay sir if madam. anyone want yeah. you can raise the hand or you yeah can... either you can raise the hand or you can post your the query in the chat box uh if you raise the hand we will ask the uh, unmute your device so that okay, we yeah. can ask the question okay so thank you masatoshi it is a nice demonstration basically i am really um, i i appreciate that and you nicely demonstrate uh, the use of the expanded for parents today and today many peoples uh, i mean before that many people are confused about the inconfused for parents so okay. i think that now they are clear <laughs> so now yes. now basically they are clear what is uh, in confused for parents and what is the normal for parents like that so anyway that is very good and uh, and uh, we are clear that maybe the normal hexaparents are not so much potential for this uh, kind of uh, near ir drug or uh, or like uh, far ir uh, drug so we need in confused materials for that because the homo and lumo energy gap is less in that case so that is uh, the good thing about that so i'm just curious that so yes. you need some materials like which can absorb in the uh, far ir region so yes. what's about the charge transfer complex about the ttf four points so that also uh, absorbs yeah. until 1600 nanometer it is a broad band so do you think that i mean Uh, is there any kind of pot potential of those kind of materials or no, no. Just, what okay. do you think yeah thank you for a question so this is actually yeah. so your strategy uh, city uh, city complex is actually good uh, strategy many people is doing for the city type complex uh, dye using for absorption for this near region mm -hmm. uh, but some this uh, important one is the stability i said one is the stability so PA imaging is just more uh, intense light irradiation required to just get in the more deeper tissue. Okay. So that if molecule is unstable under aerobic condition or some uh, physiological condition, it is decay rapidly. So we cannot monitor the uh, one. And also intensity, uh, molecule uh, coefficient, uh, absorption coefficient is important. It is more, much higher the example is expected for you. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, and also the solubility issues are uh, also a predominating factor for this TTF for finance and the expanded analogs because it is very hard to dissolve in the common organic solvents. And forget about the aqueous medium. So you need, but uh, but uh, you demonstrate one uh, chemicals here, uh, which is just uh, like uh, you need to add like adsorbent, and then your materials will be solubilized. So that is a good technique, basically. Can you see? Yeah, yes, this one, this yeah. one. That is an excellent compound. But but do you think that so uh, this compound has the anthracene molecules? So uh, those fat can we also interfere to this uh, like um, like hold the whole system? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Because that is toxic. I mean, that chemicals probably mm -hmm. I, like uh, it is not a non-toxic materials for sure. It is anthracene based materials. So uh, I mean, how to deal with that? Uh, actually, uh, we have not tried this for this biomedical testing for this molecule. I think it's it's it is a super molecule. I'd say it's good yes. to demonstrate, but some maybe we should use yeah, it for yeah, yeah. more yeah. bio uh, compa uh, compatible with some polymer actually. Yes, yes. So basically, this gold and the palladium will not uh, increase the solubility because it is charged species. But I think that the charge it is consumed by this hexafluoride molecule. So yeah. there is no is counter. It? So there is no counter anion uh, yeah. like that, right? Yes. So, yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. All right. So on behalf of the Gitan, 
I just uh, uh, convey our thanks once again, and uh, we are happy to, uh, I mean, uh, to invite you and uh, you give a lot of information and hope that in future uh, we can also have you. Thank you okay. very, very much and have a good day ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Masatoshi Shida, for very informative sessions. And thank you very thank much you. once again. Thank you. So I no. should stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, before going to the details, sir, uh, Ramaro, sir, I'll just introduce, I'll take five minutes to introduce yes. uh, uh, today's uh, whoever the presenters and Speakers. I'll hand out the sessions. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, once again, I welcome you all uh, for the today's afternoon session. Uh, and uh, now I request all the presenters, whoever are presenting in the noon session, just uh, switch on your videos uh, so that everyone can see for one or two minutes, uh, and then later you switch off. Uh, you no, know, today's I'll read out the names of the today's presenters or the speakers. Today's speakers. Uh, Oral, oral presentation uh, under health category 17, Shalini Meenan from Kochi University of Science and Technology. You can raise or no, you can share your pieces. And the second, next, uh, second uh, is the 18, Manasa Akella from uh, Gita University, Vishakhapatnam. And then Sheikh Karimullah from Department of Pharmacy, uh, Kadapa. Department of Pharmacy Practice, uh, PRR, MP, MCP, Kadapa. Karimulla, I don't know whether he's here or not. Uh, next one, uh, Mamata. Paper ID is 20, Dr. Mamata. Yes, ma CBIT from CBIT, Hyderabad. Yes, ma'am. Then uh, 21, paper ID 21, Vinay Kant. Indian Veterinary Research Institute, uh, uh, UP, India. Izat Nagar, UP, India. And then uh, next, uh, Sirisha Malladi from uh, Guntur Vidyan's Foundation of Science and Technology and Research, uh, Vidyan University, Vadlam. Uh, uh, then uh, Shaina Sultana from uh, yes, Shaina Sultana, yes, Shaina Sultana from Mariam Azmal Women's College of Science and Technology, Assam. Shaina Sultana. The next one is uh, no, paper ID 24, Sindhu, uh, from research scholar applied uh, department of applied uh, psychology geetam deemed to be university vishakhapatnam yes ma'am yes ma next one uh, dr mugundara from uh, chemistry department faculty of science university of malaysia mugundara from chemistry department faculty of science Mal malaysia kuala lumpur and uh, the poster presentation, we have like poster presentation eight by Habade Pamela, Habade Nantuko Pamela from University of KwaZulu Natal. And then next uh, poster presentation under uh, 09 by Sandeep Baskar, University of KwaZulu Natal, Durban, South Africa. Then uh, Mitta Maleshwari, post presentation 10, Mitta Maleshwari from Padmavati Mahila Vishwajalayam, Tirupati. Okay. So, and uh, I request, you know, all of you, uh, please uh, switch off the video mode. And those speakers who are speaking, please only, you know, you on the videos. Others, everyone, please mute yourself at the same time, switch off the uh, video mode. When you are presenting, please on the videos. Okay, and the time for the presentation is uh, seven minutes and three minutes is the discussion. We have today total of uh, 10 presentation, oral presentations and three uh, poster presentations are there. Okay, uh, no, all the best to all the speakers. Now with this, I'll hand over the session to Professor Ramarao Garu. Please, sir, screen is yours now. Madam, Ramarao please, Garu. thank you. Yes, yes, madam. Uh, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, again, giving me the opportunity uh, for the chair the session. Uh, 
Uh, now I request uh, Shalini Menon uh, to start your uh, presentation. As Madam mentioned, you have time is seven minutes. Please try to follow the everyone the timings. That's most important uh, for the uh, running the session successfully in a, uh, on time. Okay, and three minutes uh, we can give you for the discussion for the participants. Right. Thank you. One, one second, uh, one second, sir. Uh, and no one need to be shared. I will share the screen. Okay. Okay, okay so, madam. Please. Yeah, share the screen. So uh, who will operate? Uh... Myself. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's right. I hope uh, the screen is. Uh... Yes, it's visible, ma'am. Yes, uh, yes. Whenever no, you want to go for next, please tell us. Uh, yeah, maybe. sure. A very good afternoon to all. I'm Dr. Shalini Menon, working as a CSIR Research Associate at the Department of Applied Chemistry, Cochin University of Science and Technology. And my today's presentation is based on the work, Molecularly Imprinted Polymer-Based Voltammetric Sensor for Acetaminophen. Um, next slide. Here's the work in short. Herein, we have used gold electrode as the working electrode and gold nanoparticles were electrode deposited on gold electrode so as to get enhanced signals. And then the MIP layers, that is the molecularly imprinted polymer layers were formed on this gold electrode via electropolymerization of orthoaminophenol in the presence of our target acetaminophen. So once the MIP layers were formed, uh, the electrode was saturated in 0.5 molar H2SO4 for about 30 minutes so as to extract these embedded target molecules and uh, get these imprinted cavities, as you can see on the screen, which are complementary in shape, size, and functionality to that of our target acetaminophen. And this enables the successful uh, electrochemical specific detection of our target molecules. Next slide, ma'am. Now, what is acetaminophen? I think everyone would be commonly knowing the name paracetamol, which we all would be using when we have fever and pain. It's a common antipyretic and an analgesic, but its chronic use may produce toxic metabolite accumulation that lead to liver and kidney uh, impairment. And therefore its determination in pharmaceutical formulations and also in biological fluids is of great significance. Ma'am, next slide. It was worth comparing the proposed MIP sensor with some other electrochemical MIP sensors for APAP. And it was seen that the proposed sensor was more sensitive than the other sensors in terms of detection limit. And also it gave a wide linear concentration range. My next slide. So these were the objectives of our work. We wanted to develop a simple and a reliable voltammetric sensor for the determination of APAP, which is sensitive, specific, as well as selective, and then apply the sensor for the detection of APAP in pharmaceutical formulations and also in physiological fluids. Next slide. Several factors affect the performance of an MIP sensor, such as the number of cycles of polymerization, monomer concentration, template concentration, the various solvents which are used for extraction, effect of supporting electrolyte, its pH. So all these factors were studied and optimized. Ma'am, next slide. So coming to the results and discussion, uh, the developed sensor was characterized using uh, electrochemical techniques such as cyclic voltammetry, impedance spectroscopy, impedance, uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, as well as uh, FESM images were taken. As you can see in the cyclic voltammogram, the first figure is of that. We have the cyclic voltammogram of the ferry solution at the bare and at the different modified electrodes. It can be clearly seen that at the bare electrode, well-defined redox peaks were obtained, which is figure A. Uh, upon modification with gold nanoparticles, the current of these redox peaks significantly increased which indicates the electrocatalytic nature of gold nanoparticles. But what, was, what happened is upon polymerization, be it with NIP or MIP, what happens is these redox peaks completely vanish. Now, the reason for that is upon polymerization, a non-conducting polymer layer is formed, which blocks the electron transfer process and thereby these peaks have vanished. Once again, when we remove the template from the MIP layer or when we extract the template from the MIP layer, 
these redox peaks slightly reappeared, which is figure E, uh, reappeared. And now that could be because of the cavities that have been generated in the MIP layer through which the prop could have diffused towards the surface of the electrode and would have uh, given the redox reaction. Further adding a particular concentration of the target, what happens is the peak again disappeared. Now that shows that the target has been successfully rebinded to the cavities that were formed on the MIP layer. Similar results were obtained in the Nyquist plots. Uh, at the bare electrode, there was uh, a high charge transfer resistance, which is figure A in the second figure. But when gold nanoparticles were modified on the gold electrode, the charge transfer resistance significantly decreased, indicating an increase in the electron transfer process. But when the polymerization took place, that is upon polymerization of MIP or NIP, NIP, which is the control, that is the non-imprinted polymer layer, when that was formed, the charge transfer resistance further increased, which is C and D of that. Upon extraction of the template molecule, the charge transfer resistance decreased, and that could be due to the cavities that were formed and through that the probe could have diffused and given the redox reaction and once again adding a particular concentration of the target molecule would have caused the successful rebinding of the target and the cavities giving a higher charge transfer resistance which is figure f in the fv sem images you can see that of the bare electrode b is that of uh, gold nanoparticles modified gold electrode the average size of the particles was found to be 41 nanometer when the MIP layers were formed on the gold electrode, which is figure C, certain irregularly shaped uh, uh, hexagonal bodies were observed, which were absent in the control, that is in the NIP modified electrode, which is figure D. Now that uh, could be because uh, these hexagonal bodies, we assume that these hexagonal bodies are of the embedded target molecules. Upon extraction of these embedded target molecules from the MIP layer, Certain cavities were seen in the image, as you can see it in figure uh, E. Certain cavities which were complementary in shape and size to that of the hexagonal bodies that are seen in C. So from all these results, we confirm the successful formation of the MIP layer on the gold electrode. Ma'am, next slide. Now coming to the molecular recognition by the MIP modified film, Square wave voltammetry was employed to study the electro-oxidation of APAP on the MIP modified film. As you can see, well-defined oxidation peaks were obtained at 0.384 volts. As the concentration of APAP increased, there was a steady increase in current, and this increase was found to be linear in that given concentration range, giving a detection limit in the nanomolar range, which is 2.3 into 10 days to minus 9 molar. Ma'am, next slide. The analytical application of the sensor was tested in pharmaceutical formulations and also in synthetic urine. As you can see there, in uh, pharmaceutical formulations, there was a close agreement between the declared and the found values. And in the case of synthetic urine, the satisfactory recoveries in RST values were obtained, which indicates that this sensor is a reliable technique for the successful uh, determination of APAP in real samples too. Next slide. So I would like to conclude my presentation with the merits and the future prospects of the sensor. The merits, of course, it's a viable synthetic approach to design robust molecular recognition material, which is able to mimic APAP. Then the other advantages are that it is of low cost. It has exceptional substrate recognition ability, and it's easy to prepare. Now, coming to the future prospects of the sensor, in future, what we can do is we can modify the sensor with layer by layer assembly so that multiple uh, targets can be determined at a time. Also nowadays, few uh, researchers are focusing on magnetic MIP uh, sensors. That is, they combine magnetic MIP complexes with magnetic electrodes, which simplifies the process and also it's found to be highly efficient. So that could also be tried. But our ultimate aim is to convert the sensor to a portable electrochemical reader, just like the glucometer, so that we can use them for points of care analysis. So with that, I wind up my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. If you have any queries, please yeah. feel free to ask. Thank you, Shalini. Yeah. Uh, now it's a question and answer session. Uh, if anybody have any queries, please uh, ask her a few questions. I have one question. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, made up of gold, no? Then yes. how it is cost effective if you have taken any iron or have you tried any other than gold particles, any gold nanoparticles? Huh. Any other uh, nanoparticles have you tried? 
uh, madam, we have also tried with acetylene black, kytosan, and all these things, but mm -hmm. better results were obtained in the case of uh, gold nanoparticles. But what we are thinking is when we are, when we are planning, we are, we are actually working on the conversion of the sensor to a portable electrochemical reader. In that case, we're thinking of not using a gold electrode. Instead, we're going to use screen printed electrodes because the same uh, results, I mean, better results of, of course obtained in the gold electrode, but uh, we could also work the same thing with uh, carbon electrodes, carbon electrodes. So we are thinking yeah, you have used a GCE, glassy carbon electrode, yes, right? Yes, yeah. the glassy carbon it's electrodes. A, but, uh, um, yeah, when we are converting the sensor to a portable one, we are going to use screen printed carbon electrodes, which we are going to manufacture it on our own. So price reduction is definitely going to come down. And instead of gold nanoparticles, we are also working with acetylene black and kytosan, which is much more cheaper. Yeah. yeah. The reports are also there, you know, with other than gold, uh, like yes, you yes. told kytosan. Yes, yes. But better results, better sensitivity was obtained definitely for gold. But when we have when we think of a commercial side of the uh, sensor, we'll definitely have to come down to lower lower things other than gold. Any questions, please? I hope uh, there is no questions. Uh, uh, Sharni, thank you. Could you please uh, exit? Thank you all for your time. Thank you. The next, uh, Manas Akella. Manas Akella. Sorry, Manas. Yes, sir. So please follow the same, the seven minutes and three minutes talk uh, and discussion. Yeah. A very good afternoon to all of you here. And I would like to first of all thank Dr. Ramaro Malla, sir, and uh, Dr. Ratnamalla, ma'am, for being host today. My topic is applications of bioinformatics tools in healthcare industry uh, with uh, more focus on tools involved in the docking of small molecules in the drug discovery process. So bioinformatics, as you all know, is an application of information technology in the domain of biotechnology, a collection, storage, and warehousing of data. Now, since the electronic health records have come into form, there is a... Uh, and once the genome got sequenced, we have a huge burst, uh, you know, outbreak of uh, data and it had to be managed. So the data is further used for analysis of DNA sequences. Now, bioinformatics finds an enormous application here in the development of homology and similarity tools. Protein function analysis, drug discovery, personalized medicine, gene therapy, comparative studies, as well as climatic changes. Now, bioinformatic tools include software programs that are designed for eliciting essential information from the biological databases. And we can actually carry out sequence analysis also. Now, the visualization tools are used to analyze the data by combining information from the proteomic databases. I would like to give a few examples of bioinformatic tools here, homology modeling tools, similarity tools, Protein function. Sorry, sorry, one second. Yeah, not a problem. This one? Yeah. The previous one. One more, yeah. Now, bioinformatics tools have a wide application in healthcare, especially for identifying target specific drugs. Target specific drugs are important because. Um, the active principle which you extract from a compound has to act on the specific target to elicit the actual response required. So we have used Discovery Studio, it's version 3.5. It's a suite of software for simulating small molecule and macromolecule systems also. It is developed and distributed by Dassault Systems BioVia, which was formerly Axelris. So ligand fit is a particular com it's a commercial protein ligand docking program that was launched way back in the year 2003 and has seen so much of improvement now. This has been uh, using the charm force fields, which is one of the most apt software package for molecular dynamics simulation and analysis. Now the product suite of the soil systems has a strong academic collaboration and it supports scientific research and makes use of a number of software algorithms like CHARM, Modeler, Delphi, ZDoc, Demol3, and so on. 
molecular docking studies play the most critical role in the process of drug discovery and we focus on this now ma'am next slide yeah. uh, manasa please go to the results we have only 5 minutes time uh please go to the results and any discussions if you have okay sir i'll just explain the flow chart yeah, of the yeah, salient features only highlight the salient features one anyway. slide just one slide one more basically yeah yeah actually wanted to Ma'am, can you actually keep this slide, which is drug discovery cycle? I would like to just just before the objectives. Yeah. yeah, just to give a gist of what it is. So, in the drug discovery cycle, we have primary assays and secondary assays. So, initially, high throughput screening is done in vitro, and these compounds are sent for the secondary assay, where the clinical candidates are found. The other way round, these are subjected to computers um you know computational technology and lead compounds and structure actually activity active compounds are then designed and chemically synthesized and again the assays are performed actually so ma'am next slide the basic objective was to apply these different bioinformatic tools for optimization of lead and to predict a suitable drug candidate using these bioinformatics tools my next slide so these are basically um, the software or the tools of bioinformatics which we have tried to use in our studies basically docking is most commonly used in the field of drug design most drugs are small organic molecules and docking may be applied to identify the hits and optimize the leads that are identified and here are few of the computational chemistry softwares that are used to join the structures we have taken acd acd is active chemical directory which is a commercial thing and or we can use chemsketch then we have used molecular modeling and visualization for that we have used modeler then for molecular docking we have used ligand fit which is a commercial software autodoc is an open source though and then we have taken uh, help of the charm force fields and then the discovery studio provides software applications covering these areas which are basically the ligand design we can use ludi also in that case then pharmacopho modeling structure based drug design qsr and finally the admit properties ma'am next slide and here is a flow chart which shows um, how we actually do the docking procedure for the discovery of drug small molecule candidates which you can see here are the ligands which are taken up and the target library selection is all about the protein molecule so after the cell viability assays or western blot assays the protein molecule is considered and then the small molecules are taken from combinatorial libraries or from the review of literature which we have done already okay and now ligands are minimized similarly here the proteins are prepared proteins are prepared by removing the water molecule and all the terminals are charged and hydrogen bonds are added so that there are no conformational changes or instabilities then ligand is minimized and all the admit properties are considered and finally these are uh, set for docking and the docking ligands are saved in the library and affinity scores are checked and then finally the lead for the target is identified in the process of docking ma'am next slide now the results and discussions so basically since this is a review of the tools i haven't put more figures into it but if i get time i'll show you that also i'll just let you know what this is simulations include molecular mechanics molecular dynamics and quantum mechanics so basically when we are talking about simulations uh, molecular uh, dynamic studies are supported with the nmr spectroscopy results they are guided through that one more second yeah and then ligand design it include it includes the library optimization and enumerating molecular libraries there are already available libraries in the computational softwares 
Next comes uh, pharmacophore modeling. Pharmacophore modeling is done when you have an unknown, like an unknown target, as in you don't have the homology modeling of it. So you go and you create, validate, and then screen those structures. Then you have the structure-based design where you are sure of the structure. It includes the receptor, like in docking, and then the pose is refined and a new, um, uh, you know, confirmation or the pose is considered for further validation. Then the macromolecule design and validation specialist tools are there. Then you go with the QSAR modeling, especially the 3D field based QSAR. Here, the multiple linear regression methods, partial least square methods, and genetic function approximation, all these are taken into consideration in the background. What we see is only the visual. But however, the software that's running behind takes uh, multiple linear regression method, partial least square method, and genetic function methods. We only get to choose those options when we are actually interacting with the software though. So, and then we have these admit properties. What is admit? It is uh, very important in the pharmacokinetics of a drug where absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of a drug is really, really important. When uh, you take the drug orally, the oral bioavailability of the drug. Uh, Masa, could you conclude your talk, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Next slide, ma'am. What a conclusion. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I conclude that um, there are a few drawbacks also in the software, like, you know, there is a problem with the protein conformations, there is tautomers produced, you have so many, you really don't know which one you can take. And sometimes we end up, uh, you know, considering all the tautomers and getting the final results. So, uh, flexibility of the protein and the protein folding always creates a problem uh, when it comes to the computation. But however, basically bioinformatics uh, application helps us to cut down, you know, on time and a lot of effort and even sometimes cost. So the future of the drug discovery lies in the development of more efficient force field programs and the study of molecular dynamics of the proteins that can handle the macromolecular simulations with better stability. And then understanding and deciphering protein folding is also a bottleneck for lead optimization and direct target implications in the near future. So that's yeah. how. Uh, thank you, Manasa. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hope the, you are uh, taken the including the three minutes uh, time for the question session also. Uh, if you want to, uh, maybe one or two questions, please, if anybody. Uh, Hello, I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Okay, madam, uh, will you choose a receptor, madam, for the docking studies? Sir, when it comes to the target, target is your receptor and the ligand is your drug. Okay. okay so, so Sar is asking, how do you select the target? Yeah. Uh, see, I work for the Cancer Biology Lab and we are interested uh, at looking at the target of, uh, you know, cluster differentiation 151. So we have taken it as our target. If we have, uh, already we have something in PubMed, you know, we can take it from the accession site the primary you'll get that uh, and then you can build on it but then for our target we didn't have the structure so we had to build the structure using the lomix server okay if you have the accession number and everything ready with you if it is already there in the database of ncbi you'll be able to access it directly and use it okay you are use it into the homology modeling also homology modeling okay. yeah you're talking about molecular dynamics. What is the force field you're using there? Charm. It is C-H-A-R-M-M, charm force field. Charm force field. Yes. Uh, same we are used for the QSAR studies also. Same thing? Yes, sir. Same Hello? thing. Yes, sir. Is possible to study for QSAR also? Same? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you, Manasa. Uh, and now I request uh, the next speaker, uh, Sheikh Karimala, to start the presentation. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, you yeah. take the five may seven minutes for the talk and three minutes for the interaction. Okay, Please follow sir. the same. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, very good afternoon to all the delegates who are on the screen. And uh, myself, Dr. Sheikh Karimullah, 
uh, Department of Pharmacy Practice. Uh, I'm a PhD degree holder, presently working as an associate professor. Uh, my oral presentation with respect to the title, uh, Clinical Study on Different Antibiotic Regimens in Treating CAP, that is a Community Acquired Pneumonia uh, in a Government General Hospital. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, yeah I would like to mention uh, the pneumonia is a lower respiratory tract infection, which is mainly characterized by the inflammation of the lung tissues, uh, which is mainly accompanied by the infiltration of the alveoli. The alveoli will be considered as the smallest structural and the functional units of the lungs. And along with the alveoli, there will be infiltration, which will be accompanied by the presence of the leukocytes, that is the WBC cells and the fibrinous exudates. A majority of the patients who are suffering with a comorbid condition such as the asthma, COPD, hypertension, and the type 2 diabetes mellitus, they are at a high risk of occurring the uh, community acquired pneumonia. Uh, if you look at the symptoms, increase of the temperature, that is a pyrexia, to almost 100 degrees foreign heat. Uh, presence of the chills, a difficulty in the breathing, that is a shortness of breath. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, sir, I would like to mention about the screen sharing, sir. Uh, it has to be the minimum size. It is very much maximum. Because you can just you can carry on, please. Uh, this oh. No, it's okay. not possible. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, the empirical antibiotic therapy, the word empirical that is completely correlated with uh, before they getting the laboratory investigations uh, according to the experience and according to the knowledge of the physician. Uh, will be prescribing the certain uh, treatment to any of the patient it comes under the empirical so according to the harrison's principle of the textbook medicine of the general medicine that is mainly followed by the md doctor uh, the, the the majority of the drugs will comes under the category of the fluoroquinones uh, then followed by the beta lactam antibiotics and uh, even uh, within the beta lactam antibiotics there will be the different generations of the uh, cephalosporin, that is the cefotaxim and the ceftriaxone. And if the patient consider, uh, if the patient situation is a little bit uh, complicated, then instead of giving the single drug regimen, the physician will be prescribing the uh, dual drug regimen or the triple drug regimen with addition of the, some other antibiotics of the different categories, such as the macrolides. The best example is the clarithromycin or the azithromycin. And in some conditions, uh, if the patient has the uh, various uh, integrations with respect to the comorbid conditions and decrease uh, towards the response of the specific drug. The triple drug regimen will mainly consider the beta-lactam antibiotics along with the macrolides and along with the fluoroquinolones. And in case of the patient having the 20 or 25 years, that is the adult age group, only the levofloxacin, that is a single drug regimen, it can also be advisable. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are the common prescribed antibiotic drug regimens which has been uh, uh, used in our study. Uh, the majority of the drugs were given as a dual drug regimen consisting of the ceftriaxone and the augmentin or ceftriaxone or the azithromycin. Uh, only the levofloxacin can also be given to the patients who are not suffering. Uh, the ceftriaxone and the levofloxacin, ceftriaxone, ciprofloxacin and the triple drug regimen will be the ceftriaxone, ciprofloxacin and the azithromycin. Next slide, please. Yeah, with respect to the aims and objectives, uh, however, the drug utilization evaluation, which is a major part within the Department of Pharmacy practice, and that is assessing the knowledge and the attitude towards the prescribing practice of the different antibiotic drug regimens in you know, treating the community acquired pneumonia at RIMS, that is the Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences, which is a government hospital uh, located in the Andhra Pradesh. Uh, the major four objectives, first and the foremost is to identify the most common causative microorganisms. Here, the microorganisms may be the three different categories, whether it may be the bacteria, it may be the viruses, or it may be the fungi. Uh, then followed by the risk of developing the community acquired pneumonia, having the comorbid conditions. How many persons will have the comorbid condition that is past medical and the medication history will definitely play a significant role while designing the drug regimen to the patients who are suffering with the community acquired pneumonia. Uh, the third objective is to assess the different antibiotic regimens. So how far the antibiotic regimens were given to the patient and uh, how the response will be uh, experienced by the patient. And it has to be noted from time to time, uh, depending upon the length of hospital stay. And the last is to provide the information that is a patient information leaflets uh, by attending the patient interviews. Next slide, please. Yeah, methodology. 
Uh, the study said is a majority of the patients who are suffering with a community acquired pneumonia definitely they admit in the general medicine department. Uh, so department of general medicine rims kadapa is a study site. And the study design here have been adopted the hospital based prospective observation study. Uh, the sample size, uh, according to the calculations, depending upon the prevalence rate of the patients and depending upon the uh, admitted patients, I have taken the 120 patients as a sample size. The study durations, according to the curriculum of the specific university, at is, as it has to be done for a period of six months. So we have performed the study from June 2018 to December 2018. Uh, if you look at the inclusion criteria, uh, the patients who are willing to participate, in the study that is the informed consent before the entry of the patient is the basic necessity while performing the study. Uh, the patients who are suffering with the lobar pneumonia, they are have been included. Uh, both female and the male patients who are diagnosed with the CAP and they have been prescribed with any of the antibiotic regimens were also be included in the study. Next slide, please. Sir, please uh, go to the results, sir. Uh, your yeah, time yeah. is uh, uh, 35 minutes already, uh, uh, 10, yeah, 10, yeah. 10 minutes, yeah, please. Yeah, next slide, sir. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, results, next slide. Yeah, uh, previous slide. Sir, this is the previous four slides. One more previous. Uh, one more, yeah, yes, sir. So depending upon the gender of the patient. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, depending upon the gender of the patient, majority of the patients were males, constituting the 77 number, and the 43 were females. Uh, next slide, please. So next slide, please, sir. Yeah, according to the different age group, majority of the patients who have been suffering with the community acquired pneumonia were in the age group of 46 to 55 and the 56 and above. That is, uh, majority of the patients as they have been assessing with majority of the comorbid conditions, definitely there is an increase in the chance of occurring the infections due to the decreased immunity by the antibodies. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, here, if you look at the comorbid conditions, each and every patient who have been crossed the 40 or 45 years, they have been suffering with the uh, hypertension or the type 2 diabetes mellitus as a CAP is completely correlated with the pulmonology. So majority of the patients as they have the social habits of the smoking. So some of the patients were also suffered with the asthma and the COPD. Next slide. Yeah, with respect to the social habits, the 70 persons they have each year any of the social habits. That is the 35 patients were smokers, 12 patients were alcoholics, the 17 patients were betel nut chewers, and there are some patients who have the two different as a social habits. That is the smokers and the alcoholics. That is the 20 patients. Next slide. Yeah, with respect to the sputum culture, here I should like to mention that is the majority of the patient. Uh, they did not perform this sputum culture as it is a government general hospital due to the lack of the laboratory investigations. Uh, so only 80% have not performed this sputum culture while the 20% of the patient, they have get their sputum culture and they have been isolated as the microorganisms. Next slide. <clears throat> Yeah, after getting the sputum culture reports, uh, majority of the CAP, they have been identified as the bacterial diseases and the 21 patients, they have been suffered with the fungus related disorders and only six patients, they have been suffered with the virus related CAP. Next slide. Yeah, within the bacteria, majority of the patients were uh, the isolated organism was the streptococcus pneumonia. Uh, then followed by the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumonia, E. coli, and the Streptococcus aureus and the Haemophilus influenza. So these are the various bacterial uh, causative organisms for the community acquired pneumonia. Next slide. So here, uh, the prescribing regimen by the physician, only the seven patients, as they have no comorbid conditions, they have prescribed only with the levofloxacin. Uh, but majority of the patients, that is almost all the patients, they have been prescribed with a dual drug regimen, that is either cefraxin or the augmentin, or cefraxin or the azithromycin, or ceph with the levofloxacin. And there are only 16 patients who have the uh, most of the uh, suffering of the related disorders. So they have been prescribed with a triple drug regimen of the cefraxin, levofloxacin, and the augmentin. Next slide. So here, the dual therapy is a 97 patients. Within a total of 120 patients, that is almost 100 patients, they have prescribed with a dual drug regimen. 16 patients have prescribed with a triple drug, and only 7 patients, they have been prescribed with the levofloxacin alone. Next slide. 
depending upon the severity of the condition uh, majority of the patient they have been stayed within the hospital for a period of 3 to 5 days that is a 55 patients and some patient that is a 45 patient they have stayed for almost one week that is a 6 to 8 days and slowly the decrease in the number of the patients leads to the increase in the hospital stay next slide that please conclude please yeah please yeah, thank sir, you this is the conclusion uh this research work will mainly highlights about the uh, knowledge and the attitude by the physicians towards the treating the community acquired pneumonia in a tertiary care teaching hospital uh, with respect to the above results i have been concluded that the male patients they have high incidence rates of occurring the cap when compared to the female patients uh, because uh, one of the foremost reason is as the male patients they have certain uh, social habits such as smoking or the alcohol which leads to the uh, pulmonary or the pneumonia related disorders and uh, then followed by majority of the patients they have been within the age group of 45 to 55 years and the above due to decrease in the immunity power uh, leads to the increase in the occurrence of the community acquired pneumonia cases next slide Uh, the risk of developing the cap was high in the patients with the comorbid conditions such as the copd asthma type 2 diabetes and the hypertension and in this result um, the with respect to the bacteria the streptococcus pneumoniae and the pseudomonas serinosa were the most common causative microorganisms within a total of 120 patients and the beta lactam antibiotics consisting of the ceftriaxone or the penicillin they are the most commonly prescribed class to the cap patients and within the total of 120 patients almost 97 patient they have prescribed the ceftriaxone and the augmentin which has given the very favorable responses to the patients which has led to the decrease in the length of the hospital stay yeah thank you uh, any one question uh, is a uh, permit because is a ton, uh, running the time late any question please okay thank you karimulla thank you sir uh, for your nice presentation thank you so much sir the honor is mine next mind. speaker is uh, uh, dr m mamata uh, please follow the time 7 minutes for presentation 3 minutes for only the interaction please thank you sir good afternoon everybody thank you organizers and the coordinators for giving me this opportunity for this oral presentation the ne uh, next slide ma'am the title the title of my oral presentation now is synthesis and characterization of impurity f in 4 amino n5 methyl isoxazole by benzene sulfonamide drug synthesis so my main my main part of the, what i am doing is the drug synthesis of this drug molecules okay these sulfonamides main is mainly based on sulfonamide drugs these sulfonamides they are the basis of most of the drugs and they are responsible for many antibacterial drugs antibiotic and also anti malarial anti fungal properties also these are mainly used to treat the sinus and urinary tract infections these actually what are the sul ma'am one second actually what are these sulfonamides these sulfonamides are the first effective chemotherapeutic agents to be employed systematically for a, uh, to prevent and cure the bacterial infections that means uh, these are mainly used as an antibacterial antibiotic anti malarial or anti fungal properties the drugs which i have synthesized next slide ma'am so these are the sulfa drugs if you see the first one paba that is para amino benzoic acid and the second one is sulfonamide basic structure this paba this is generally synthesized in the body where it is used to uh, react with the uh, cells of uh, or dna of any uh, human being or any bacteria the drug which i have synthesized is the sulfonamide drug so if you look at paba that contains cooh as a functional group and if you look at the sulfonamide basic structure it contains so2 n r1 h that means the cooh its structural analog is so2 nh2 sulfonamide so when i am saying sulfonamide drugs it includes so2 nh2 okay so if you look at the right side this paba in the it will combine with the, that is para, para amino benzoic acid will combine with pteridine glutamic acid and produce the folic acid this is in bacteria okay so this back in bacteria this folic acid will help in synthesis of this uh, uh, dna structure and that bacteria will react will act on the body so what we are doing instead of adding this paba now i have created in that red color you can see i have synthesized this sulfa drug 
which will combine with glutamic acid and pteridine and it will inhibit the synthesis of folic acid. So when it inhibits the synthesis of folic acid, that means now the uh, bacteria can, the, cannot, uh, the cell is arrested. That means DNA it cannot be produced and therefore uh, it, our drug, sulfa drug is acting like an antibacterial drug. Okay. So main purpose for me is to inhibit the synthesis of this folic acid. Next slide, ma'am. So now if you look at these structures, okay, the first structure that is 4 amino 5 methyl isoxazole, what is given? So that is a five member ring which contains isoxazole. And next to all are impurities. You can see impurity A, B, C, D, E, and F. So while we are synthesizing this first sulfur and sulfamide drugs, there are several impurities which are formed side by side. So we should also analyze the impurity also which is formed. So my main focus is on that last one that is impurity F, which is formed during the synthesis of this main drug that is sulfonamide drug. So what I am doing is that I am synthesizing that impurity F. I'm synthesizing the drug and then I'm also characterizing it so that during the synthesis of this sulfur drug, we can avoid that impurity F. Okay. Next slide, ma'am. So these sulfonamide drugs, they are... Madam, I go to if any results and discussion, you took three minutes for just an introduction. No, sir. This yes. is a main part because that sulfur drug, what, just now what I have shown, that impurity F only, I'm synthesizing that one. So next one is only the synthetic part of it. So I can conclude it by seven minutes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Please go ahead. So these sulfonamide drugs, just now what I've explained. So instead of PABA, now I'm introduced this SO2 and H2. So next slide, ma'am. So the, these sulfur drugs, they can be in the form of capsules or in the powder form also. Next slide, ma'am. Now, this is the main scheme where if you see three methyl isoxazole thiamine is there and N acetyl sulfamethyl chloride is there. These two are the starting materials for synthesizing of my impurity F drug. Okay, these two are the starting material for the synthesis. So, what I have done is I have synthesized this three methyl isoxazole thiamine as well as I have synthesized this N acetyl sulfamethyl chloride. These two I have synthesized, then I have combined both and then I have synthesized the acetamide. From that acetamide, I have synthesized this benzene sulfonamide. So you can see from cyanoacetone on treating with hydroxylamine sulfuric acid at a base, followed by treating with an acid at 110 degrees for 30 minutes, I synthesized 3 methyl isoxazolphiamine. Then from acetanilide, I synthesized N acetyl sulfamide chloride, both together in pyridine. The acetamide is formed. From there, I have synthesized this sulfonamide drug. Okay, next slide, ma'am. No, this one, I have this main uh, impurity of what I have synthesized, I have characterized it by uh, FTIR NMR, proton NMR, as well as C13 NMR. So uh, in the IR, uh, the sulfonamide, I mean, it showed at around 3,400 centimeter inverse. And based on this proton NMR also, I have, we have analyzed that that is the only the impurity F and also based on this carbon 13 also, C13 NMR. These are the spectral data which I have analyzed. Next slide, ma'am. Then uh, this sulfonamide, they have several uh, side effects also. Like generally, they have rashes, pneumonia, uh, nausea for type of feeling, or drug fever, vomiting, jaundice, kidney damage. These are the various side effects of this sulfur drugs. Okay, and I have many references I have taken. Out of it, the main one reference which uh, from where I have taken this, I have kept this one. This is one of the reference. Okay. This is my main presentation where I have synthesized uh, sulfonamide drug and also if there's any impurity, that impurity can be avoided. That compound I have synthesized. This is said to be an active pharmaceutical ingredient in drug synthesis. Yes, that's all. That is my present. Next slide, ma'am. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, any questions? Uh, uh, thank you, Mamata, uh, for your, your nice uh, the presentation of the basics. Uh, of course, it may be in the beginning uh, for any research. We'll start with the basics only. And uh, the, in any questions, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You can sir. leave now. Thank you. The Thank next speaker is uh, uh, Vijay uh, Vinay Kant. Uh, is going to talk on negligible uh, protection of the pancreas by uh, topical curcumin. 
in streptogenesis induced diabetic wound rats please thank you sir uh, thank you i am highly thankful to could you speak you louder for giving me this it's a bit louder uh, yeah a bit louder yes, sir yes yes yeah now it's hello yeah yes. yeah right right now it's uh, am i audible sir yes yes, yes. Oh, oh thank you sir for giving me this uh, nice opportunity and uh, for you taking a lot of pain to organize this uh, uh, conference now i am going to present my work on uh, negligible protection of pancreas by topical curcumin application in streptogotosin induced diabetic wound rats uh, this is just a part of our earlier work in which we observed the wound healing potentials of curcumin when it was applied topically on the wounded rats in diabetic uh, wounded diabetic rats so here uh, the purpose was just to know that whether our topical curcumin application was effective to regenerate the damaged pancreas or not so this was the, just a small study to uh, observe the effect of topical curcumin so uh, next slide please uh, so please uh, move to introduction so as we know this diabetes this is one of the leading cause of many health problems like cardiovascular problems retinopathy uh, this nephropathy and this uh, impaired wound healing this is one of the main problem and the diabetes can be type 1 and type 2 and in both the cases pancreas is one of the main organ which is damaged and this is mainly responsible for uh, uh, impairment of lot of functions of the body now diabetes if there is a diabetes definitely it is a financial burden to the patient and impair the quality of the life although there are more than 50 million diabetics in only in india and this is the data of 2010 now to ameliorate this diabetic problems various formulations preparations have been tried and curcumin this is one of the natural flavonoid which have shown some anti diabetic potentials after administration Uh, by different routes but we observe uh, this curcumin after topical application as a wound healing agent in case of diabetic rats so uh, our purpose to evaluate whether this topical curcumin is able to protect the uh, damaged pancreas or not so next slide please so we'll move to this uh, uh, material method next slide please so our uh, objective is to study the regenerative action of curcumin on damaged pancreas of diabetic rats after its topical application on bones so next slide to achieve, achieve this uh, objectives we uh, this study was conducted on uh, male vista rats and the diabetic model was induced after single injection of streptogotosin and after uh, confirmation of diabetes a single 2 uh, by 2 cm square open excision type of wound was created on the back of the rats and this was conducted under general anesthesia using pentobarbital sodium as an anesthetic agent and we you uh, divided the wounded rats into three groups the group 1 was non diabetic and we can say this is a healthy uh, wounded rats and group 2 and 3 they were diabetic rats and in group 3 we applied the curcumin as a topical agent and after application for uh, 19 day uh, then uh, after 19 day we killed the rats and uh, we collected the tissue before killing we observed the body weight gain or blood glucose levels in all these three groups and uh, after 19 day the tissue mean was pancreas which was collected and this pancreas was used for the estimation of mda level which is a end product of this lipid pro oxidation which is a uh, indicator of uh, oxidative oxidative stress which is the main uh, uh, consequence of this diabetes and histopathologically we get the uh, axis staining for uh, pancreas next slide so what we observed that body weight gain there was no loss in the body weight there was no gain or no significant change we can say no significant change and this was although a study of 19 days but blood glucose level Uh, there was persistent higher blood glucose levels in uh, diabetic control group as well as diabetic treated group means curcumin topical application uh, de definitely we do not expect curcumin after topical application can uh, improve the blood glucose level next md level which is a indicator of lipid peroxidation or oxidative stress we can say the diabetic control as well as diabetic treated with curcumin both are having higher md levels as compared to healthy control means in the pancreas after topical application of 
curcumin it was not able to improve the oxidative stress condition in the pancreas which is damaged by the uh, streptococcus next please and the damage was further confirmed by, uh, by histopathologically where we observed that healthy control group is having a intact beta cells and there is a lot of beta cells are available which is a source of insulin and in diabetic control this is atrophy of beta cells we can say degenerative changes or necrosis has been observed in diabetic control group and as well as this diabetic treated group also which was treated with curcumin there was also no uh, regeneration after uh, topical application of curcumin so but we concluded next please we concluded that single intrapatent injection of streptozoxin was able to produce diabetes uh, after producing oxidative stress as, as well as by damaging the beta cells of the pancreas and uh, the topical application of curcumin 0.3% on the bones of diabetic rats did not able to prevent as well as reverse this damage of the pancreas so in future we can go for the higher uh, concentration of curcumin or lower concentration of curcumin to evaluate their effect or we can use the nano formulation of curcumin because mostly in case of uh, wounded wounds we definitely prefer for the topical formulation so we want that our topical formulation can improve the uh, different oxidative conditions present in the system thank you sir queries from the participants it's a very nice topic and uh, 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 the curcumin is having a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. I hope many of you are uh, studying uh, the various dimensions of the curcumin. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Vinika. you. The next speaker is Sirisha Maladi. She is going to talk on phytochemical investigation of uh, Karaluma. Lesianta and its isolation of the new steroids. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Sirisha. Ma'am, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm associate professor, professor from Vignans University. First, I would like to thank organizers and coordinators for giving me this opportunity. And in this presentation, I'm going to uh, concentrate on phytochemical investigation of uh, Caraluma lasianta and isolation of a, a C31 steroid, which is a new steroid. And ma'am, next slide. And uh, are you, all of you know that the nature is the wonderful source for various uh, medi medicinal uh, compounds. And natural products means those are the chemical compounds which are existing in living organisms like marine uh, organism, plants and other living organisms. And these natural products are uh, uh, being the uh, in, uh, are giving the scope for uh, developing new drugs and uh, new moieties, and that's why uh, we aimed at uh, uh, extracting and uh, characterizing the new chemicals. And here we are going to concentrate especially uh, to carry our phytochemical uh, investigation on Caraluma lasianta plant, and especially in this. Uh, presentation, I'm going to concentrate on a C extraction and characterization of a C31 steroid, which is extracted from chloroform extract of my uh, a taken plant, Caraluma lasianta. The one you are seeing on the screen is the image of the plant. And from that plant, I, uh, we got a C31 steroid molecule. Thank you. My next slide. And uh, this is the uh, image of a plant, Caraluma lasianta. And this Caraluma lasianta uh, belongs to Asclepidaceae family, which is having a good medicinal importance and under the genus Caraluma. And these plants are all having good medicinal importance and they are showing, uh, uh, they, are, they have shown a very good biological activities like antibacterial, antifungal, antioxidant, anti-cancer, all such activities. And uh, here, uh, this Caraluma lasianta especially is a succulent plant which is growing well in water lagging uh, uh, areas, especially in our Andhra Pradesh. It, it is most widely growing in uh, Chittur, uh, Anantapur and Kadapa districts. And ma'am, previous slide, once again. 
and we collected the plant this caroluma lasiantha plant from gutti hills ananthapur and that was certified by dr b ravi prasad sir from sk university and a specimen of this plant is deposited in herbarium of sk university um, next slide a literature survey uh, was carried out on the family asclepiadaceae and the caroluma genus and uh, under that caroluma genus we have taken one plant caroluma lasiantha and from literature survey uh, we came to notice that two pregnant glycosides were uh, extracted uh, they were named as lasianthoside a and lasianthoside b and one flavon glycoside was extracted and in our previous studies from n-hexane extract uh, we have extracted stigma sterol and uh, 1c21 uh, steroid and now uh, 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 this c31 steroid we extracted from the chloroform extract next slide ma'am and our main objective of this uh, study is to explain how uh, c31 uh, steroid is extracted from chloroform uh, extract of the caroluma lasiantha and how it is uh, characterized by using various uh, spectral techniques especially coc hmbc and hsqc techniques are used to characterize the compound which is extracted and coming to the experimental uh, uh, methods uh, i have taken the uh, uh, roots and stems of the caroluma lasiantha from gutti hills ananthpur and i have dried it uh, such roots and uh, uh, stems under shade and uh, that shade dried uh, stems of caroluma lasiantha are finely powdered and they are extracted with uh, 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 different uh, solvents with varying polarity starting from uh, an hexane ending to the methanol by using soxlet extractor and uh, whatever the extract uh, extracts i got they are uh, perfectly recrystallized and they are subjected to column chromatography for isolation and characterization of the uh, phytochemicals and uh, from chloroform extract of the c lasiantha we, we got a c31 steroid and how it is characterized we'll see now ma'am next slide please and uh, based on uh, ir spectrum of the compound in ir spectrum it is mainly displacing uh, one peak at uh, 3490 uh, uh, that indicates presence of uh, oh uh, uh, functional group and that is due to oh stretching and the peaks at uh, 3000 uh, indicates the presence of aromatic madam please highlight the results don't read the uh, each uh, result so okay, based sir. on that what you identified uh, yes it. from from ir spectrum uh, we concluded that presence of oh group and uh, co groups in the compound and later from nmr spectrum uh, we concluded especially due to the peak at 12.16 we concluded the presence of carboxylic proton and from uh, uh, c13 nmr uh, uh, 31 carbons are concluded and uh, 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 noticing a peak uh, at uh, m plus uh, at 509 uh, is indicating that m plus 1 uh, uh, molecular ion peak next slide ma'am and uh, how the structure is uh, conformed uh, by using uh, depth uh, uh, cosi and uh, hsqc HMB, hmbc techniques we conformed the structure and we have taken depth uh, 45 90 and depth 135 uh, from depth uh, uh, from all these depth spectrums uh, we concluded that uh, the uh, newly uh, obtained compound is having uh, nine methane groups 10 methylene groups and uh, three methyl uh, carbons of course from depth 45 all uh, carbons or uh, all peaks are same and from uh, depth 90 especially we get uh, ch carbons and depth 135 we'll get uh, uh, up peaks and down peaks from down peaks we'll get ch2 carbons based on that we concluded nine methane uh, 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 carbons 10 methylene and three methyl groups are there in the compound and uh, later we have taken uh, Cosi spectrum also from the Cosi spectrum uh, we concluded how proton proton interaction interactions of the interactions are there on adjacent protons and uh, from uh, HSQC uh, spectrum we concluded uh, uh, what are the interactions between a particular carbon and 
proton and from HMBC uh, multiple bond correlations uh, we have uh, seen and based on all these uh, details we concluded the uh, structure ma'am next uh, uh, slide we concluded the structure like this and where that thick line uh, indicates the Cauchy spectrum and that Cauchy spectrum indicates the proton-proton uh, uh, interactions on adjacent carbons. For example, if you take the second carbon, so the proton on second carbon is interacting with the first carbon and uh, uh, proton on first carbon and proton on third carbon. And that arrows indicate the HMBC correlations, that is multiple bond correlations, especially side chain, presence of a side chain is a, uh, uh, confirmed by HMBC only, various uh, interactions are there uh, through HMBC spectrum. Uh, for example, presence of a, a, a proton, a side chain uh, like uh, CO interaction, uh, uh, two dash carbon uh, proton interacting with a, a proton which is present on uh, one dash carbon and three dash carbon, like that multiple bond correlations are confirmed by using this HMBC spectrum. Um, next slide. And uh, we have uh, uh, extracted and characterized a C31 steroid in this study. And in future, we want to do the antibacterial, antifungal and other uh, uh, activities uh, uh, to test its medicinal importance. That's all, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Siri Sagaru. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions, please? So medicinal plants okay. are uh, so very... Funny. Uh, important source for uh, most of the drugs. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, sir. I can ask a question. Yeah, please. Uh, very good um, lectures by ma'am. So I have a question that uh, particularly the um, steroids or the materials uh, extracted directly um, uh, that can be used in the purpose of a bone fractures um, jointing. So can Madam speak about that? Sir, uh, can you say once again, sir, because your voice is breaking, sir? Yes, uh, the, uh, the materials extracted from uh, direct plants can be used for bone uh, fracturing process. Yes, sir, uh, but uh, uh, I have to know it in detail. Uh, even I don't know at present. I know about antibacterial, antifungal, antioxidant, anti cancer, all these studies. So, based on your question, uh, I, I'll search for that, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. okay, thank you, Dr. Sirisha. Thank you, uh, sir. For your nice presentation. Now, the next speaker. And Lakshmi, uh, please uh, uh, present your uh, presentation. Lakshmi J. Hatia. From Department of Physics, Saurashtra University, Rajkot. Sneha Sultana. Yes, sir. No, please. Am I being audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Shana Sultana from Mariam Ajmal Women's College of Science and Technology, Sam. Well, uh, my topic is a study on the toxic effects of lending on the histopathological parameters of the gills and liver of the Indian freshwater catfish, Clarius petrachus. Please move to the next slide. Next slide, please. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, yes. now talking about the aims and objectives, we have aimed here to estimate the acute toxicity of the organochlorine pesticide that is lindane on the fish Clarius batrachus and to determine their 96 hours median lethal concentration, that is their LC50, and we also aim to, to observe and estimate 
the effects of linden on the histological alterations of the gills and liver. Well, uh, why we targeted this is that uh, because the Clarius batracus, which is a freshwater catfish, is an important source of nutrition, and it is commonly found. Besides, it has low mortality and it's easy to maintain. So we targeted on the fish. Besides that, fishes have also been used extensively for monitoring purposes because they concentrate part of pollutants in their tissues. And they also occupied different habitats. That was the reason uh, this fish was specifically selected for the study. Now, when I talk about uh, the organochlorine pesticides, they are widely used and they are known for their high toxicity, slow degradation, and the property of bioaccumulation. After DDT became legally restricted in many countries, the insecticide hexachlorocyclohexane became quite popular. Now, moving to the next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. And now talking about the materials and uh, previous slide, please. Materials and methods, yeah. Now, talking about the materials and methods, I'll not go into much details as like uh, I can say we procured this kind of fish, you can see on the slide already. And um, we conducted the acute toxicity test using the standard methods. And then the results were analyzed using the SPSS statistical pass package. But the thing I can tell you is that uh, like while, we were, while the fish was being handled, proper care was taken to ensure its proper nutrition and the physical chemical properties were maintained as you can see in the table out here, the table 3.4. Besides that, controlled set of fishes in aerated unchlorinated tap water without pesticides was maintained. And all the fishes were staffed for about 24 hours before the commencement of the exposure, so as to eliminate the possibility of differential feeding influencing their estimations. After that, we conducted the, the section, we extracted the organs and conducted the histological studies using standard methods. Next, let's move to the next slide. Now, when we analyzed the data from the acute toxicity test using statistical analysis, the 96th LC50 value of lindin to Clavius batracus was found to be 1.14 mg per liter. Now, after we found out this, we dis it was decided that a certain concentration of 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6 mg per liter, which was determined to be the sublethal concentration, sub -lethal concentrations of lindin was used to check on the fishes and to check its effect on the different fishes and on the different aspects, be it gill or liver. Now let's move to the next slide. Let's proceed quickly to the results. That is, when I talk about the histopathology of the gills, the first thing which we can see here is that, and the first point is the control here. It shows primary lamellae as it's marked there, secondary lamellae, the pillar cell, chloride cell, the pavement cell, it has been marked in the picture. Now, when we, after 24 hours of exposure, and when it's treated with 0.2 mg per liter of lindane, the gills of the fishes showed shortening, fusion, and swelling of the secondary lamellae, which has been marked in the picture, be in the picture, and then in those treated with 0.4 mg per liter of lindane, the shapes were appear to be distorted of the secondary lamellae due to the fusion of the secondary lamellae, as we can see in the picture B, in the picture, sorry, C. Next, there was lifting of respiratory epithelium and hemorrhagic areas were also seen at places. We can see that clearly as it has been marked using arrows and letters. Now, if we move to the, now, when we look at the 0 0.6 mg per liter concentrations of lindane, after 24 hours of exposure, mild degeneration resulted into the organization of the gill lamellae. Partial hemorrhagic areas were also noticed, especially in the region, if we can see clearly, if we can see here, if we focus probably on the region of the primary lamellae. Besides that, vacuolation, desquamation of the epithelial lining and lifting of the epithelial layer from the secondary lamellae were also persisted. In the alterations in the pathology, histopathology of gills are basically characterized with 
overall in the gill lamella of fishes, which has been exposed for 24 hours. Okay. Now, please, can we move to the next slide? Hello, am I being audible? Yes, yes, yes. Am I being audible here? Yes, madam, please. Now, we're able to slide, hear you. Please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, could you please change the slide, please? Yeah. Okay. No, no, the previous slide, please. Previous slide. Okay. Now, when in case when it was a in the changes in case of 96 hour concentration when what was treated with zero point with 0 0.2 mg per liter of lindane uh, due to fusion of the secondary lamellae the normal shape of the secondary lamellae appeared to be distorted in the group of fishes bipolar degeneration of the epithelial cells and this organized lamellar shape were also observed now lifting of the respiratory respiratory epithelium and desquamation of the epithelial lining were also seen in places. As we can see here in the picture, in F, I've all, the changes have been marked. And besides that, when we checked for those in 0 0.4 mg per liter of lindane, there was progressive degeneration resulted into complete disorganization of the gill lamellae. Extensive hemorrhagic areas were also noticed in the region of the primary lamellae, of course, and baculation, there was hyperplasia of the chloride cell and there was lifting of the epithelial layer from the secondary lamellae. Now, in those treated with 0 0.6 mg per liter of lindane, severe hemorrhagic areas were found, especially in the region of the primary lamellae. Normal shapes of the primary and secondary lamellae were completely distorted and there was breakage of gill lamellae, hyperplasia of chloride cells, vacuolations and degenerations of the epithelial cells. Now, as if we compare the previous slide and this slide, we'll see that the changes were more remarkable and more severe in, in, the, in times where the exposure duration was greater and the exposure concentration was greater, right? Now, if we move to the next slide, next slide, please. Yes, uh, could you conclude quickly? Yeah, sir. Okay, in case of liver, like we could see, uh, we could clearly observe in case of, when we observe to 0 0.2 mg per liter of lindane, we can see mild fatty, fatty change, and then the polygonal shape seem to be distorted. In case of 0 0.4 mg per liter of lindane, we can see the distortion. We can see the vacuolation as it's shown in the picture, and there was marked loss of interconnective tissue. And then, in, and those changes became more pronounced, as we can see in the image, in the images shown here. Now, next slide, please. Here in this in this slide, we can clearly see how the different how in accordance with the concentration, the different uh, changes are remarkable. In 0 0.2, we can in 0 0.2 mg per liter, we can see vacuolation and damage of the membrane. In 0 0.4, we can see the changes became more severe and more remarkable in those treated with 0 0.6 mg per liter of melindine. The changes were the most obvious, there were severe mark changes. The highest changes were observed here because here the duration of exposure was greater as well as the concentration. So there was great distortions of the hepatic cords and connective tissues. There was massive infiltration and deposition of fats. And there was also pycnosis of the nuclei, which we can see has altered the hepatic parenchymatous cells. Now let's move to the next slide, please, sir. Please now, conclude, please conclude. Yeah. Uh, now we can say that, uh, simply speaking, as I've already mentioned before, like uh, the most important thing was that uh, all these changes were clearly time, exposure time and dose dependent, right? So if lindane can induce such changes in the body of fishes, then talk, if we talk about humans, and I've already talked about bioaccumulation, so if we consume these kind of toxic fishes, we are going to be affected very badly as well. Besides that, pesticides are also found to be having a great effect on the human beings. So we should take proper care 
of not letting ourselves get exposed to pesticides and try to reduce the use of these kind of pesticides for our safety as well as the safe for the safety of the animals as well as the environment so that's all i had to say thank you thank you sahna uh, sultana uh, please one or two questions quickly okay thank you madam next सिंधु प्रवीणा सिंधु प्रवीणा सिंधु प्रवीणा सर आई ऑडिबल टू यू यस यस कुड स्पीक लाउडर या सो वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन माय नेम इज सिंधु प्रवीणा डी अ रिसर्च स्कॉलर फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ अप्लाइड साइकोलॉजी आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स and uh, dr sunita gandhi ma'am as associate professor in department of applied psychology for giving me the opportunity and making this happen so the topic today which uh, i am going to present is the impact of gratitude on physical health parameters integrating the technology and its implication du during covid-19 pandemic next slides so this study basically focuses on the review of all the studies related to gratitude Uh, which are technologically based uh, based uh, on the physical and mental health of a individual during covid-19 next slide please sir so as you all know uh, coronavirus is a pandemic and uh, it it, uh, it the symptoms are range, ranging from the mild symptoms to severe uh, including the death so this kind of symptoms had created a panic situation in everyone so in such situations apart from the treatment and medications and the vaccine which is ongoing other than that the positive psychological uh, techniques like practicing gratitude uh, uh, by incorporating the technological aspects seems to balance the situation next slide please sir so if you see the literature uh, what is this gratitude gratitude is nothing but uh, giving thanks to others so uh, thanking others thanking ourselves thanking mother nature it's basically a positive psychological uh, uh, intervention it is the most common practice of gratitude is a uh, thanking uh, three good things which uh, we list so it is uh, so gratitude is related to health directly or indirectly in both physical and mental aspects so health as you all know is a state of complete physical mental and social well being an interesting definition by lancet is the health is the ability to adapt to the new threats and infirmities so in the, most of the studies have focused on the uh, gratitude related to health or uh, related to hormone balance glucose regulation sleep quality and neurotransmitters etc next slide please sir so gratitude is directly related to health physical or mental or all aspects and uh, incorporating gratitude by using the technological trends will also promote the health which is very essential for the present covid-19 situation next slide sir so how gratitude and technology are linked uh yeah so as you all know technology like uh, in this covid-19 situation everyone started using technology and uh, doctors uh, uh, they, they communicate using the telehealth uh, and tele counseling and uh, uh, the gratitude is linked to technology in the form of uh, posting a gratitude apps in the instagram or facebook uh, and even in, even some kinds of apps of gratitude and developing certain games like groups by practicing gratitude they actually in turn improve the physical and psychological health among the users next slide sir so the main objective of this study is to review the previous findings of gratitude intervention on physical health parameters and discuss their applicability for the prevention and recovery during covid-19 pandemic so it has three objectives it's like to explore the gratitude intervention on physical health and also on the chronic health conditions those who are suffering from and the other one is to explore the web based gratitude interventions efficiency on the participants health 
the next slide sir so it is actually carried out in four stages the stage one is the as current systematic review was conducted based on the prisma guidelines and in the stage two using uh, all the search engines of uh, pubmed google scholar crocane ingenta research base and everything a relevant studies were identified and from that qualitative and quantitative studies with full abstracts up until november 14 uh, from the past 10 years were included in this following review in the stage 4 we are going to review the studies and discussion next slide sir so as as you can see the total of uh, 300 studies are identified over that 76 were found relevant and uh, the full abstracts uh, after duplications are excluded total 33 studies are included 36 studies are included in this review next slide sir so if if we see the review and the results of the study so most of the studies are conducted on uh, physical health uh, and those were uh, suffering from chronic health conditions has shown the significant positive results where uh, gratitude it's a proper experimental gratitude studies uh, increase the cortisol reactivity sleep quality and uh, blood pressure sleep quality and uh, inflammatory response and cardiovascular including the previous slide please sir. so including the diabetes brain cognition neurotransmitters everything are most most of the studies 90% of the studies are significantly improved with the practice of gratitude and it is also very much effective uh, in the chronic health conditions like spine severe spinal sorry spinal cord injury and breast cancer in women so the web based gratitude interventions almost all of the studies of total 5 found were uh, found to be significantly effective in improving the mental and physical health among the participants next slide sir devina could you conclude quickly yes yes so here uh, the uh, gratitude can be practiced using a sensitive context sensitive smartphone app and a web based gratitude letter writing and uh, posting a gratitude app in a instagram and instagram communication technology and internet app based gratitude intervention so next slide please next slide please so finally i would like to conclude uh, saying that practicing gratitude using the technology uh, uh, like counseling tele counseling using tele conferences web web based interventions like blogging uh, gratitude uh, apps using the gratitude apps in facebook and instagram etc will will improve the situation of physical health parameters though it is not like it's not like a treatment it it will be able to help to balance the situation of the covid-19 pandemic so thank you sindhu thank you uh, any thank you questions so uh, please okay thank you thank you sir thank you. but very nice uh, work definitely uh, you know that's impact of this uh, uh, factor on the health thank you thank you so much i hope it should be clinically proved but of course yes 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 yeah next uh, presentation next, next by mugand dr mugandar rao from uh, mugandar rao from uh, university of malaysia yes a uh, very good evening to everyone so i am uh, mugun uh, muguna rao uh, from uh, university of malaya okay uh, malaysia and uh, today i would like to uh, present about the development of magnetic poly beta cyclodextrin functionalized ionic liquid nanocomposites and its application in the magnetic micro solid phase extraction of polycyclic hydrocarbons from rice sample before i start my presentation i would like to thank uh, the chairperson dr ramarao and the dr ratnamala and the gitam university for organizing such a nice conference next slide madam please <clears throat> So basically in this research what we are doing is we are preparing a new type of the functionalized 
uh, cyclotic extreme functionalized ionic liquid uh, coated with the magnetic nanoparticles. Okay, it's a new type of the nanosorbents, and these nanosorbents are being applied in the magnetic solid phase extraction. Okay, to extract the selected polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons as the model analytes to extract. Uh, those compounds in the rice samples. So the prepared material was successfully characterized by using a uh, few analytical techniques as shown in, in my abstracts. And further, uh, the, the, the material was applied uh, to the development of analytical method uh, for the analysis of uh, PAH in the uh, selected food samples. Here in this case, I have tested with the rice samples and a few optimization have been done. Uh, and um, the, the sorbent exhibits the satisfactory uh, reproducibility uh, in the extracting the five selected analytes. Uh, so I would like to, next slide, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, so basically I'm just sharing the few paper cuts of these, uh, uh, the, the effects of the uh, burning process uh, in the Australia and the uh, chemicals in the meat cooked at high temperature. So all these actually, uh, you know, uh, can release the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon to the environment and the food samples as well. So basically, uh, from where these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are coming from, actually it's formed from the incomplete combustion. It can be due to the uh, engine exhaust, industrial outlet, crude, uh, uh, crude oils or pyrolysis of organic matter as well. So, and it can be divided into light path and heavy pass as well. Next slide, ma'am. So uh, basically, uh, polycyclic. Uh, air, I mean, uh, sorry, the sorry. previous. Yeah, basically, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, you know, there are 16 types of the purities. Uh, I mean, uh, there are 16 types of PA has been listed as the uh, persistent organic pollutants. Uh, and they have uh, uh, substantial uh, toxicity and possible carcinogenic properties that can cause damage to the DNA. So basically, uh, the existing uh, limits for the heavy PAR, uh, for the heavy PAR, but uh, for the light PAR is actually, uh, uh, I mean, there is no limit yet. Uh, especially when coming to the uh, food samples, especially rice sample, okay, there is no uh, limit has been set yet. So uh, therefore, uh, in this method, so we would like to develop a very sensitive analytical uh, method to analyze the PAH, uh, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon in the rice sample by using the, uh, I mean, uh, by using the MSPE method and the detection by the GCFID. Okay, so next slide, ma'am. So basically, uh, in the chemical analysis process, so the chemical analysis process begins with the sampling, sample preservation, sample preparation, instrumentation, and data analysis. So basically, sample preparation covers the most of the part of the uh, analysis work. So in order to increase the sensitivity of the detection, so our sample preparation method should be good enough so that we can you know, improve the sensitivity and we can get a good LOD values as well. So therefore, in this method, what we are doing is uh, we are developing a uh, a, a magnetic micro solid phase extraction uh, method, okay, uh, which is the uh, alternative way of the conventional extraction techniques such as liquid liquid extraction, SPE, ASE, MEE. So, all these methods are consume a lot of solvent. So, in our method, okay, uh, we are using a less uh, amount of organic solvents and it's a non exotic simple, low cost and high adaptability. So that's why we are going towards the liquid phase micro extraction and a solid phase micro extraction. So in this case, I'm going to present about the solid phase micro extraction. Next slide, man. So next slide, man. So the rational, uh, okay, the, the objective of this research is basically to synthesize and characterize the poly beta exchange function as ionic liquid coated with magnetic nanoparticles to optimize and uh, to develop, optimize and validate the magnetic micro SPE technique for the determination of low molecular weights of PAR in the rice samples, coupled with the GCFID gas chromatography flame ion detection analysis, and to compare the analytical performance with the commercial or the conventional C18 SPE technique so that we are here, we are to compare the, uh, the performance of the materials. Okay, so next slide, man. 
So these are the uh, experimental procedure, how the material has been uh, synthesized uh, in this uh, method. Okay, next slide, ma'am. <clears throat> Uh, okay, basically, these are the, the application of that uh, material. Basically, here, this, this is the, actually the schematic view of the magnetic micro solid phase extraction. It begins with the extraction, isolation, illusion, and finally, GCFID analysis. Okay, so next slide, ma'am. So uh, here, we have uh, optimized about nine parameters uh, by using one factor at a time method. Okay, next slide, ma'am. So uh, in this optimization, we have choose the best optimization parameter. Next slide, ma'am. Uh, so uh, another next slide, ma'am. So the, the optimized condition is actually listed in the table here. So these are the optimized condition. And uh, before we begin our optimization, we have done our comparison with the control uh, polymer as well. For example, the uh, only the beta cyclodextrin ionic liquid functionalized polymer and with the magnetic nanoparticles itself and with the modified one. So basically, uh, with all this comparison, we have concluded that the uh, modified poly beta cyclodextrin ionic liquid coated with magnetic nanoparticle uh, exhibits the better extraction performance in terms of sensitivity and in terms of enrichment as well. So that's why we are proceeding with, uh, I mean, we have proceeded with this uh, material, okay, in the analytical method. Okay, next slide, ma'am. So uh, finally, uh, we have uh, done the method validation uh, of the proposed magnetic micro solid phase extraction. Uh, extraction. So basically, um, we have done with the five types of uh, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and the uh, method. The, I mean, uh, the the LOD it seems to be uh, low. Okay, it's a PPB level, microgram per kilogram level, and. Um, in order to further conform uh, the, the, the performance of the material, so we have done uh, sorbent to sorbent reproducibility, okay, uh, interday, intraday, which is run to run and day to day and uh, matrix effects. So all the uh, the values are actually in the uh, I mean uh, I mean in the permitted level, and the percentage of the error as well is less than five percent for the. Uh, for the sorbent to sorbent, I mean, uh, for the matrix effects as well. So that's why uh, actually the uh, the, uh, the 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 performance of the method is actually good. Okay, next slide, ma'am. So uh, we have done the comparison of the uh, material with the control, which is magnetic nanoparticle alone, and without ionic liquid poly beta CD magnetic nanoparticle and. SPEC18 as well. So based on the performance comparison, next slide, ma'am. So we have uh, concluded that these are the comparison of the LODs value limit of detection of the developed method. So basically, the, the developed method seems to be very sensitive because uh, we can evaluate the sensitivity uh, by evaluating the LODs value. So in this case, the LOD value is low enough. So um, we have concluded that the developed method is a very good good method uh, in order to analyze the uh, path samples in the rice uh, in the rice so and uh, we we have also done the relative recoveries okay the in order to test the matrix effects so it seems that the uh, the matrix effects uh, i mean the, the percentage of recovery is the within the uh, permitted uh, level okay the the, the value okay uh, next slide ma'am with less matrix effects. So these are the example of chromatogram, okay, with the spiking level, okay, as we increase the spiking concentration, uh, all these uh, five peaks can be clearly seen. Next slide, ma'am. So uh, here I just want to uh, show the uh, chromatogram of different rice sample extract by using the optimum procedure, okay, uh, where Phenanthrene uh, was detected in all the tested samples. Okay, so uh, next slide, ma'am. So uh, we have actually um, evaluate the real sample analysis by using the total equivalent factor, okay, which reflected the carcinogenic potency of the total rice group. So basically, phenanthrene and fluorantine, with phenanthrene as the imaging uh, as the most abundant element, and the concentration of phenanthrene was detected in the range 
of 4.82 uh, microgram per kilogram to 22.3 microgram per kilogram. So uh, in our tested, uh, about 24 samples, uh, we have been tested uh, for this method. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Dr. Rao, could you conclude quickly? Yeah, next slide. I, I'm about to finish. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Madam, could you please? Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, so the chromatogram of the positive samples and we have compared, compared it with the GCMS chromatogram as well to further confirm the, uh, the presence of the analyte in the sample. Next slide, ma'am. So uh, these are the comparison with other reported work. So the present work uh, seems to be very sensitive, okay, with the uh, low uh, relative uh, standard deviation. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's comparable, reliable uh, and sensitive. Okay, and next slide, ma'am. So as the conclusion, uh, the, the, uh, the developed method was successfully been developed, validated, and compared and applied in the uh, various types of uh, rice samples, uh, and the PAH content have been detected in the tested samples. So next slide, ma'am. So uh, I have shown the future works of the, the developed material. Basically, the developed material has the sensing application and uh, we have tried for the dye removal as well. It, it, it do works with that. So in future, we are going to try with that. So next slide, ma'am. I think, yeah, this is my final slide. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Boon Yi Yoon, my PhD student, for his completion of the, I mean, uh, this research work and Malaysian Pharmaceutical Company and uh, Advanced Medical and Dental Institute, University of Science Malaysia, Science. and Department of Chemistry, and Center of Ionic Liquids, uh, University of Malaya, and Fundamental Research Grant. So with that, thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, and uh, sorry for the uh, yeah. time. Uh, okay. okay, that's Thank you, Rao. Thank, thank you, Rao. you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any questions, please, quickly? Uh, yes, sir. I have yeah, a question. Please, please Dinesh. Yes, uh, sir, uh, which type of cell is uh, the magnetic particle you are quoting that is in a cell model that is amorphous or crystalline? Uh, come again? Oh, okay. Uh, before coating, it was crystalline and after coating, it was more, more towards amorphous. Sir, it is porosity, more porosity to absorb or capture? Yes, 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 exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rao. Okay, one, so one you question. may refer, uh, Yeah, well, another question. Another yes, question, yes. please. Please, madam. No, this one you have uh, quoted, uh, no, cyclic voltammetric you are showing, no? You have tried uh, yeah, for cyclic the voltammetric yeah. CV studies. Uh, the, the good peaks are coming. Actually, you have uh, tried on gla glassy carbon electrode. Yeah, it is a classic carbon, carbon electrode. electrode. Yes. Okay. yes. Any the still it is in initial stages or further? Uh, uh, it's in a very initial stage, uh, ma'am. So we haven't proceed yet. So probably uh, upcoming work it can be yeah. one of the work as well. Yeah. Okay. So I think I have another one slide. Last slide. Uh, so you may <laughs> refer, uh, the publication of the work for further information. Thank you for the opportunity again, Chairperson. Yeah. Thank you, Rao. Thank okay. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Food chemistry cap paper, eh? Food chemistry. Food chemistry. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, madam. Yeah. We'll go for the poster, sir. Yes, madam. Please. Uh, what's the time limit? Is there any limit for this uh, poster session? The, yeah, yeah, sir. Five five minutes and two five yeah. minutes. Sir. Five minutes. Five to seven. Yeah, yeah. We are in perfect only six point two zero. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hmm. Madam, can you please announce yeah, yeah. those members whether they are present or not? Uh, the first three members. Those three members. Yes. One second. I would like to know the uh, now Hadebe Pamela Hadebe Nantuko Pamela from University of KwaZulu Natal, Durban, South Africa. Is he there? Ali Bhai, open who are? Chaya de Ghani ke liye. Hello, Hadebe. Uh, okay, N next to uh, just read out second name and third name. Second then name. Show the slide. VH, VHS Sandeep Baskar. VHS Sandeep Baskar. VHS Sandeep Baskar uh, from same place, University of KwaZulu, Nathan, Durban, South Africa. And uh, third, Mitta Maleshwari from Padmavati Mahila Ishwadyalam, Tirupati. 
Madam, please share this uh, screen. Uh, in case if they are present, yeah, yeah, they are yeah, otherwise we can skip it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Share the screen for the uh, poster presentations. One second, I'll share. The, I'm sharing. उसमें क्लिक कर सरिद्रेटर One second, Hadebe, Nantuko, Pamela, are you there? And this is the title is Synthesis Spectroscopic Investigation of DFT Calculations on Pyrazole Based Triazoline Conjugates by Using Heterogeneous Catalyst. Are you there? I think uh, they are not there. Uh, Uh, yeah, they are not yeah. in the meeting, madam. They are not in the meeting, madam. It's second one. Uh, BHS Sandeep Baskar, BHS Sandeep Baskar, from University of KwaZulu Natal, Durban, South Africa. BHS Sandeep Baskar. I think they are. He is also not there. The third one, Mitta Maleshwari, Mitta Maleshwari. Mitta Maleshwari from Padmavati Mahila Vishwavidyalaya. Uh, Madam, if no one is there, you can conclude no for the session. Uh, you can ask the chair to conclude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madam, if there is no response no, from them, no response please, sir, uh, you conclude. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can conclude actually, sir. Yes. Thank yes. you. Uh, I think now you can. Uh, no, I'll hand over the session, sir. You please conclude the. Uh, You want me to conclude, or yes, yes, sir, because yeah. no one are responding. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, these the participants and the speakers of this uh, session. Uh, we run this session uh, very fruitfully and uh, very good uh, uh, talks, especially uh, by Mr. Mr. Toshi and other speakers uh, from the India. Uh, really really it's a very good uh, useful the work and uh, i thank the organizers and also the participants uh, for participating in this uh, very useful the seminar thank you thank you very much uh, no each uh, each one who participated in this uh, uh, e conference uh, all of you has really you know done very good uh, job thank you okay thank we are so thankful to dr malla ramarao garu for chairing the session and thank giving you. his valuable inputs okay but just within 2 minutes uh, tomorrow session the information already shared with all the members uh, tomorrow we have two sessions that is session 3 and 4 and uh, session 3 is morning 9 am to 12 noon 
and afternoon session is from 1 to 4 pm and then tomorrow we have uh, two invited talks uh, one is by dr moses from kenya and uh, the second one is by dr edith from south africa and then tomorrow sessions a little bit different one and session 3 whatever is there we start morning 9 o'clock itself we start with oral presentation because the speaker uh, he feel convenient uh, he feels convenient from 11 to 12 o'clock so 9 to 11 first two hours will be oral presentation and the invited talk will be at the end that is the difference for the morning session as far as the afternoon session is concerned and 1 to 2 will be the invited talk followed by oral presentations so the total information is already shared with you and tomorrow session will be taken care by dr nagarazu his contact details are available with you both email id and phone number if anyone is having any doubt in this regard they can contact dr nagarazu sir so already the feedback links were shared and uh, those who didn't do that please do that and then if you have any query or if any have any suggestion feel free to email already the email ids are available with you you can uh, email or if you want you can contact based on your convenience so if there is any uh, discussion point from any one of the participant let us uh, wait for few seconds somebody asking uh, for no the feedback links of today uh, to be sent uh, tomorrow morning as well i said okay yeah so we can provide the feedback links of today morning and afternoon session in the tomorrow morning session as well so is there any uh, one, point of discussion from any one of any the one of you, yes. session one yes. anyone wanted to say something you please dr nagra sir would you like to say something for tomorrow session Yeah, no, sir, no, sir, no problem. You can close this. Yeah. Uh, sir, sir, I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to ask something. Sure. Please, sir, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to know about registration number of the participants. Uh, yeah. Because in uh, the registration number for the participant was emailed to all of you. Okay, please check your email, and uh, to, we have given today morning the Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet, we have given the number, sir. so please check once again if you have any doubt you can email us or if possible uh, today evening once again we will email again all the registration numbers to all of you okay so uh, i actually i didn't receive the email containing uh, registration number sir uh, okay so, sir that, that's why yeah yeah that sk varma garu okay uh, we will try to contact you i will call back you no problem okay that's why i'm i, I was unable to uh, fill the attendance of the session one and still i am not able to fill that one um, yeah yeah my my mobile session number two. is given in that uh, chat box please note down okay after that uh, okay. let's uh, uh, issue solve the issue okay sure 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 please note down please. my number and let's have the discussion it is uh, 9902632733 right ah uh, please please call me after completion of the meeting okay okay thank you sir thank you sir so in, in, today uh, any one of you know wanted to have the feedback regarding today's session they can have Yeah, in the chat from box, the feedback from the links are available. Session one yes. feedback can you share once again, Madam? Can I leave? Ah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, Rama Rama. Oh, yeah. Rama, please sir. Thank you. I have another yeah, meeting at four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very sir. much, sir. Rama Rama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, sir. Hello. Feedback for the session one. Hello. So you want you want feedback of morning session also? Oh yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, my feedback uh, link is not opening. What can I do? Again, no, feedback we'll link is common for everyone. Uh, but it's not opening. Uh, what can I do? Should I mail you? Uh, no, no. Now we are once again sharing. Please go through it again, madam. Link is not available. What, sir? <laughs> Uh, sir, is it that you do not have the permission to access this? Session is disabled. Sir. Yeah, morning session and after the session link now they are pasted. So those who are wants, they can copy paste with you. And if you have any uh, problem regarding the filling the forms, 
you can give one email to us i think uh, uh, everyone is filling and we okay, are so receiving the feedbacks no problem uh, vishwash korana please uh, dr vishwash korana sir, it's a, yeah sir yeah 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 it's uh, showing the same you do not have the permission to access this file uh, okay okay and we will try to rectify it please copy why. please copy paste both the links with you on the word file and then we will come back to you okay ma'am Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Otherwise, and there is a problem okay. that we don't understand what this registration number is. Yeah, registration number. Okay. Uh, are you? Can I know? Uh, you are the participant or presenter? I'm the presenter actually. The I presenter, have been given the presenter, number. In the presenter for you, O P oral presentation H dash. Some three digits are there at the end. You exactly yes. Yeah, you uh, put it. Yes, sir. Uh, we tried entering that. Thank uh, you. Uh, for your kind information. Hello. And no, it must be a number. So it must be a number. Entry. It cannot. Uh, it will not accept not the. It's not taking the. Yeah, no, no. alphabets. No, no. Uh, don't put the alphabet. Only last number only. entry please uh, uh, sir one more query whether the participants have also been given the registration number i'm just a participant yeah yeah, yeah. for, for the uh, participant also we have given the registration number madam okay yes, already it was emailed to, today morning anyhow for the sake of convenience to, today yes. evening also i am going to uh, uh, email again today morning okay. done today evening will be repeated uh, in spite of that you didn't receive means please give me a call to the number whatever i have given please in the chat box the number was given oh, okay let me save the number okay if you have any doubt you can call us you can email us so that we will try to give the prompt reply as far as possible thank you thanks for thank you ananda thank you thank you ananda